Welcome, travellers, to an extraordinary journey into the myths and legends from around the world. In this series, we'll explore mythical creatures and cryptids from every country on Earth, chosen for their cultural significance and unique characteristics. Join me as we uncover captivating tales from diverse cultures and ancient traditions, discovering the intriguing and mysterious beings that define our global folklore. Grab a seat and your favorite drink, and let's begin. Alugat is a vampire-like creature from Albanian mythology. These beings hide in dark places that never see sunlight, like water wells, old ruins, and caves. They look terrifying and are very violent. Lugats can fly, move with the wind, and attack people while they sleep. They also lure people, especially children, by staying hidden in the darkness. As undead beings, they can't be killed at night, but if found in their graves during the day, they can be burned. Lugats are often said to wear the skin of a dead person and have long fingernails. In Albanian, the word Lugat can also mean a wicked or scary person. Tantagu is a figure from Pyrenean mythology, often described as a tall, bearded old man wearing a hooded tunic, sometimes made of animal skins and carrying a club. His job is to protect pastoral and agricultural life, by watching over crops and herds, scaring off thieves and predators. Tantugu is said to know all of nature's secrets and is considered an embodiment of the Roman Sylvan and the Gallic god Sucellos. Though he rarely appears to humans, people both respect and fear him. Traditionally, there's no record of Tantugu being harsh, but over time, he became a figure used to scare children. Stories say he lurks around the lakes of Nair, snatching children who come to fish and taking them back to his cave. Krampus is a horned, human-like creature from Central and Eastern Alpine folklore who is said to accompany St. Nicholas on the night of December 5th, known as Krampus Nacht or Krampus Night. While St. Nicholas rewards well-behaved children with small gifts, Krampus punishes those who have misbehaved by hitting them with birch rods. Krampus is typically depicted as being covered in hair, usually brown or black, with one cloven hoof and goat-like horns. He has a long, pointed tongue that hangs out of his mouth and sharp fangs. He carries chains thought to symbolize the Christian church's binding of the devil, which he shakes for a dramatic effect, often accompanied by bells. Krampus also holds a bundle of birch branches or sometimes a whip, which he uses to swat at naughty children. On Christmas Eve, he carries a sack or basket on his back to cart off misbehaving children for punishment. Some older stories even mention Krampus taking kids away in his bag. Lazavik is a friendly creature from Belarusian mythology that lives among the vine bushes. Described as a small being with one eye, a long beard, and a very long whip, Lazavik's single eye is said to shine like a light when it walks through the marshes. Lazavik prefers to stay hidden and lives in a tiny house with no windows or doors. As the guardian of Belarusian marshes, Lazavik's life is tied to the well-being of these wetlands, and it is believed to die if the marshes are drained. Lazavik uses its whip to drive away small, pesky creatures called Lozniks that are harmful and noisy. The Kluder is a demonic creature from Belgian and Dutch folklore, often seen as a werewolf, demon, or even the devil. It lives in water and lurks in reeds, under bridges, and in hollow trees, where it pulls children in. Kluder moves incredibly fast and is said to be created from the ashes of witches and wizards. Killing one is believed to cause seven more to appear. Described as a large dog with bat wings, bear claws, a black beak, and glowing red eyes, Kluder can shapeshift into various animals, including ravens, cats, and horses. To escape the Kluder, 
People believe you should throw a handkerchief as the creature is compelled to tear it apart slowly, giving you time to get away. A vila is a fairy-like being in Slavic mythology similar to a nymph. Vilas are spirits of nature with an unpredictable relationship with humans. In stories, they can be harmful, destroying crops and killing people, or helpful, providing magical items and aiding heroes. They are also known for their warrior-like qualities. There are three types of velas, those who live in forests, water nymphs, and cloud or air nymphs. Vilas can appear as swans, falcons, horses, wolves, or even whirlwinds. At night, they make loud noises with pipes and drums, and those who call to them are said to become paralyzed, fall ill, and die within a few years. In Bosniak epic poetry, Velas often guide and help warriors, such as in tales where they raise the Hernjika brothers, granting one strength and the other beauty. Samodivas are ethereal maidens from Bulgarian folklore, often depicted with long, loose hair, sometimes with wings, and dressed in flowing, feathered white gowns that allow them to fly. They are described as tall, slender women with blonde or red hair, pale, glowing skin, and fiery eyes. In some stories, they possess a magical veil that holds all their power. Without it, they become powerless. Samodivas live in various natural settings like trees, abandoned shacks, dark caves, or near water sources such as rivers, ponds, and wells. They are often associated with certain mountains in Bulgaria, particularly the Pirin mountain, which is considered their traditional favorite. Samodivas enter the human world in the spring and stay until autumn, spending the winter in the mythical village of Zmejkovo. As protectors of nature, Samadivas are closely linked to plants with medicinal properties. They are believed to have deep knowledge of herbs such as Euonymus alatus and Gentiana alba, which are associated with their healing powers. They are also known for their love of singing and dancing, often competing with each other or with humans, and the winner claims the loser. In some parts of Bulgaria, Samadivas are thought to cause mysterious natural events like chronic illnesses and whirlwinds, similar to how Nereids were believed to influence winds in ancient Greek mythology. The Drekovac, meaning the screamer or the screecher, is a mythical creature in South Slavic mythology. Its name comes from the verb drekati, meaning to screech. The Drekovac is described in various forms in folklore, it is often seen as an undead man or unbaptized child that rises from its grave at night to haunt the living. In some stories, the child's ghost pleads with people to baptize it to end its suffering. In eastern Serbia, the Drekovac appears as a humanoid canine walking on its hind legs. Around Maglaj, it is depicted as a ghost of soldiers, while near Kozaska Dubica, it is seen as a vampire-like undead man. Other descriptions include a creature with a long neck and legs with a cat-like head, a one-legged humanoid with glowing eyes, and a dappled foal, dog, cat, or bird. In Gruza, it is said to be a creature with a thin, elongated body and a large head, believed to be the soul of a dead child. Traditionally, Drekovac is thought to come from the souls of sinful men or unbaptized children. It is believed to be visible only at night, particularly during the unbaptized days of Christmas or in early spring, when mythical creatures are most active. As a child, it is said to predict death, while in animal form, it foretells cattle disease. Drekovac avoids dogs and bright light, and if its shadow falls on someone, that person is believed to fall ill and die. The Vodnik, also known as Hastaman, is a water demon. It resides in rivers, streams, and ponds, but each Vodnik stays separate from others due to their antagonistic nature. While some Vodniks live solitarily, others form relationships with human women 
and live with their families. Those in ponds are considered more wild, while river-dwelling vodniks are believed to live in grand underwater palaces, keeping the souls of the drowned in pots. Vodniks are often depicted as green men with wet coats and a missing thumb on their left hand. In some stories, they appear as ordinary humans or peddlers at markets, where they are associated with good fortune. Vodniks lure people into the water to drown them, especially targeting those who bathe after dark. They use invisible nets to trap victims and often use trinkets or ribbons to entice people. If someone falls under their shadow or interacts with their lure, they risk being dragged underwater. Vodniks are believed to avoid dogs and bright light. In one tale, a Vodnik maintains a collection of captured souls in pots within his underwater home, where he can also show kindness to his servants, like turning dust into gold. Vodniks can transform into frogs and use this guise to trick people. For example, in one tale, a Vodnik transformed into a frog to seek revenge on a butcher who had previously harmed him. In folklore, Vodniks are often linked with natural events and places, such as mills or rivers, and are seen as both dangerous and enigmatic beings. Slattenpatten is a female creature in Danish folklore, also known as an Elekone, or Elf Woman. Unlike the beautiful Elipige, Elf Girls, Slattenpatten is characterized by her extremely long breasts, which can hang down to her knees and be draped over her shoulder. This unique feature allows her to feed children or even fish children while underwater. Slatten Patten is linked to fertility and is thought to represent a water goddess in some interpretations. Her long breasts symbolize the many children she has nourished and cared for, and she is associated with both water and fertility, particularly in the Danish region of Zealand. Krat is a magical creature from Old Estonian mythology known as a treasure bearer. A krat is created from hay or old household items and brought to life by giving the devil three drops of blood. The krat would follow its master's orders, often used for stealing or fetching goods. It had to be kept busy constantly or it would become dangerous. To get rid of a krat, the master would set it impossible tasks, such as building a ladder from bread which would eventually cause the crat to catch fire and burn up. In folk astronomy, a shooting star or bolide was believed to be a crat on fire, fulfilling an impossible task and burning away as a fireball. Firefox is a mythical creature from northern and eastern Finnish folklore. It is described as a fox with a tail that sparkles with fire. The firefox is said to live in remote forest hideouts or in the northern regions rarely seen by people. During the day, it appears black, but at night, its tail twinkles with flames. Its fur, when brushed properly, emits a strange light. The fur is highly prized and was historically used to light powder storages safely. In Finnish folklore, the firefox is linked to the northern lights, known as fox fires. Revontulate. It is believed that the firefox creates the northern lights by flicking its fiery tail against low-hanging branches or bushes as it runs through the night. Tarasque is a legendary creature from Provence, France, named after the town of Tarascon. Originating from Galatia, it was believed to be a hybrid of the Onychus, a destructive beast, and the biblical Leviathan. The Tarasque was described as a fearsome dragon with six stubby bear legs, an ox-like body, a lion's face, a thorny turtle shell, and a tail ending in a scorpion's stinger. It terrorized the region by killing passers-by and sinking boats. According to the golden legend, St. Martha tamed the beast with hymns and led it to the city. Terrified townspeople killed it, but later, they converted to Christianity and renamed the town Tarascon in the creature's honor. In German folklore, the Wolpertinger is a mythical creature said to inhabit the alpine forests of Bavaria and Baden-Württemberg in southern Germany. 
The Volpertinger is described as having a body composed of various animal parts, typically including wings, antlers, a tail and fangs, all attached to the body of a small mammal. The most common depiction features the head of a rabbit, the body of a squirrel, the antlers of a deer, and the wings, and sometimes legs, of a pheasant. Stuffed Wolpertingers, made from real animal parts that have been mounted, are often displayed in inns or sold to tourists as souvenirs in the creature's native regions. The Minotaur, also known as Asterion, is a mythical creature from Greek mythology. He has the head and tail of a bull with the body of a man. The Minotaur was born from a curse by Poseidon, who made Minos' wife, Pasiphae, fall in love with a divine bull. Pasiphae used a wooden cow crafted by Daedalus to mate with the bull, resulting in the Minotaur. Minos, in shame, had Daedalus build an elaborate labyrinth to imprison the beast near his palace in Knossos. The Minotaur was fed human sacrifices, including fourteen youths from Athens, as retribution for the death of Minos's son, Androgios. The creature was eventually slain by the hero Theseus, who navigated the labyrinth with the help of a thread given to him by Ariadne, Minos's daughter. The Turul is a mythological bird of prey, predominantly depicted as a falcon, that holds significant importance in Hungarian and Turkic traditions. As a national symbol for Hungarians, it embodies a rich cultural heritage. The name Turul likely originates from the Turkic term Tograil, which refers to a large bird of prey, such as a goshawk or red kite. In ancient Hungarian, Turul was used to describe a specific type of falcon. The Turul is celebrated in Hungarian mythology for its protective qualities. According to the legend of Amis, the Turul appeared in her dreams while she was pregnant with Almos, the progenitor of the Hungarian people. This mythical bird is believed to have served as a guardian spirit, similar to the Simur in Persian mythology. In the legends, the Turul is depicted as a savior of the Hungarian tribes. It is said to have protected them from attacks by eagles, which were seen as symbolic enemies. The Turul's role is comparable to that of the Norse Vedfolnir and other birds of prey found in Eurasian nomadic cultures, where such birds are often associated with spiritual guardianship and fertility. The Biandira Kongur, or King of the Bears, is the legendary monarch of Iceland's polar bears. Born from a female polar bear and either a walrus or a bull, this regal creature is distinguished by its red cheeks and a single horn tipped with a platinum globe. The horn not only symbolizes its authority but also lights its path through darkness. Known for its wisdom and nobility, the Biandira Konga understands human speech and commands loyalty from other polar bears. It wields its horn primarily for self-defense or to discipline unruly subjects. In the 18th century, a remarkable event saw a procession of polar bears led by the Biandira Kongur through southern Iceland. The bears were greeted with respect by the local clergy and congregation. When one bear misbehaved by killing a sheep, the Biandira Kongur punished it with its horn. The procession ended at Grenovic, where the bears disappeared into the sea. A banshee is a female spirit in Irish folklore known for heralding the death of a family member through screams, wails, shrieks, or keening. Described as having long, streaming hair, banshees are often seen combing it, with legends suggesting they can only keen while doing so. They wear a grey cloak over a green dress, and their eyes are red from continuous weeping. Variations in size exist, with some accounts portraying them as unnaturally tall, while others describe them as short, emphasizing their fairy nature. Banshees may take the form of a sweet-singing virgin who died young, or a shrouded woman lamenting beneath trees or flying past in the moonlight, foretelling certain death 
within the family. The Banshee's keening is integral to mourning traditions in Ireland and Scotland, acting as a lament for the deceased. This mournful wail serves as a precursor to death, with the Banshee also predicting fatalities when someone enters a perilous situation. In Italian folklore, the Bafana is a witch-like old woman who delivers gifts to children on Epiphany Eve, January 5th. Similar to Santa Claus or the Three Magi, she is a prominent figure in Italian culture, known by various names across the country. The Bafana's origins are shrouded in mystery and speculation, with theories suggesting pre-Christian, Christian or syncretic roots. On Epiphany Eve, it is common in many parts of Italy to celebrate with mumming, where effigies of the Befana are burned in bonfires. She is traditionally depicted as a hag in a black shawl, riding a broomstick and covered in soot from entering homes through the chimney. The Befana is known for bringing sweets, candies or toys to good children and coal or garlic to those who have misbehaved. Though she is generally a beloved figure, she also evokes fear and is a subject of playful mockery, especially among children. The Calicanzaros is a mischievous creature in Southeast European and Anatolian folklore. Descriptions vary, but they are often depicted as small, black, devil-like beings with animal features, such as hairy bodies, goat or donkey ears, and long tails. These creatures are believed to emerge from their underground homes during the 12 days of Christmas, causing trouble and mischief. Despite their frightening appearance, they are generally seen as foolish and impish rather than truly harmful. To protect against Calicanceroi, people would employ various methods, like placing a colander on the doorstep to distract them, burning a fire to prevent them from entering through the fireplace, or marking doors with a black cross. In some traditions, throwing desserts on the roof or burning foul-smelling items would keep them at bay. There is a belief that children born during the 12 days of Christmas could turn into Calicanceroi as adults unless preventative measures were taken. The legend of the Calicanceros is often linked to ancient winter festivals and is similar to the concept of goblins and leprechauns in other folklore traditions. In Latvian mythology, Lauma is a benevolent spirit associated with childbirth, ensuring the health and welfare of both mother and child. If the mother does not survive or gives up the child, Lauma assumes the role of spiritual foster mother, spinning the child's cloth of life while lamenting the fate of some children. Over time, Lauma's image has shifted from a nurturing figure to a more malevolent one. Disrespected by husbands who accused her of baby snatching due to her inability to bear children, her once sweet appearance and demeanor have deteriorated into that of an evil old hag. She mourns her transformed state, longing for the day she can return to her former beautiful self. Couldn't find a mythical creature, but I did find an interesting little story. On the Feast of the Assumption, 15th of August, three sisters went to Gaffadura above the village of Plankin to pick berries. As they walked, they heard church bells ringing, calling worshippers to celebrate the holy feast. One sister suggested they attend the church service, but the others insisted they needed to fill their baskets first. By late afternoon, the baskets were full, and the sisters began their journey home. Along the way, they encountered a beautiful woman who asked for some berries. The sisters refused, saying that those who wanted berries should pick them themselves. Suddenly, a halo appeared around the woman's head, and she declared, You have dishonored my holy day and denied my request. Your hearts are of stone. As punishment, you shall be turned to stone and remain here forever. With those words, the sisters were transformed into massive rocks which have since been known as the Three Sisters. 
Eight Varus is a nature spirit in Lithuanian mythology and is identical to the Latvian Pukis. It typically appears as a white or black rooster with a fiery tail resembling a meteor. An eight varus hatches from the egg of a rooster aged between nine and fifteen years. If it dies, it turns into a spark. Often described as a bird with dragon-like features, the eight varus tends to take up residence in a household where it can bring both fortune and misfortune. It may provide the home with stolen gold and grain, but its presence can also lead to trouble and complications for the inhabitants. Melusine is a figure from European folklore, particularly associated with northern and western France, Luxembourg, and the Low Countries. She is depicted as a female spirit of fresh water, typically portrayed with the upper body of a woman and the lower body of a serpent or fish, similar to a mermaid or lamia. In some illustrations, she is shown with wings, multiple tails, or both. The legend of Melusine is closely tied to the Counts of Luxembourg. According to the myth, Count Siegfried of the Ardennes, who founded Luxembourg in 963 AD, was connected to Melusine through his ancestor Siegfried. On their wedding night, Melusine magically created the castle of Luxembourg on the Bock Rock. She had stipulated that she required one day of absolute privacy each week. When Siegfried, driven by curiosity, saw her in her bath on a Saturday, he discovered her true form as a mermaid. Melusine and her bath then sank into the earth. Melusine is said to be trapped in the rock, but returns every seven years as either a woman or a serpent, carrying a golden key in her mouth. Anyone who dares to take the key can free her and win her as a bride. If she finishes sewing a linen chemise before she is freed, Luxembourg will be swallowed by the rock. In Maltese folklore, Il Beliega is a creature born from tales meant to scare children away from the dangerous wells that were once a staple for collecting rainwater. These wells, often dug in backyards or fields, were a daily chore for housewives and children. However, the wells could be perilous, and children sometimes fell into them while playing or peering into their depths. To prevent such accidents, mothers would warn their children about Il Beliega, a fearsome creature said to snatch those who came too close to the well's edge. The name Il Beliega derives from the Maltese word tibla, meaning to swallow. This creature is depicted as a serpent with the face of a monstrous fish, somewhat like an overgrown eel. In folklore, she would use her tail, tipped with fingers, or her tongue, similar to a frog catching flies, to grab children and swallow them whole. These stories served as a stark warning to keep children safe around the wells. In Romanian folklore, the zbarata, which means flyer, is a supernatural being often compared to an incubus. Described as a roving spirit or malevolent demon, the zbarata is known for visiting women in their dreams, appearing as a handsome young man. His visits are typically characterized by erotic and unsettling encounters. The Hotel Chateau de la Chèvre d'Or, a renowned gourmet restaurant located in Aise, derives its evocative name from a captivating Provençal legend tied to the region's rich history. To uncover the origins of the Golden Goat, we need to look into the historical backdrop of Provence, which was plagued by Saracen raids between 730 and 973. These Moors, having migrated from Spain, plundered and looted many areas as they advanced northward. During this period, a particular Saracen named Abdel Rahman, facing the pressure from King Conrad III of Provence, decided to conceal his considerable loot. He chose to hide his treasure inside a goatskin, which he intended to place in the Val d'Enfer caves within the Alpile mountain range. Guided by a goat to the cave of the Witch Tavern, Abdel Rahman was tasked with defeating a formidable monster if he wished to securely store his treasure there. 
Driven by his greed for wealth, he accepted the challenge. After a grueling battle lasting two days and nights, both Abdul Rahman and the monster perished. In the aftermath, Abdul Rahman's followers witnessed a magnificent golden goat emerging from the cave, completely covered in gold from horn to hoof. This golden goat, now a guardian of the Moorish treasure of Fraxinet, is said to appear on mountain ridges, leaving a trail of golden threads as it moves. This legend has inspired the name of the Chateau de la Chèvre d'Or, intertwining the hotel's identity with the mystique and historical allure of Provence. The Soglav, or Dog Head, is a demonic creature from Balkan mythology, particularly found in the folklore of Bosnia and Montenegro. This sinister being is depicted with a human body and horse legs, a dog's head featuring iron teeth, and a single eye positioned on its forehead. Soglavs are said to dwell in caves or dark, sunless lands rich in gemstones. They are notorious for their gruesome habits, which include eating living humans as well as exhuming and consuming corpses from graves. In Dutch Low Saxon mythology, Vita Viven, or white women, are spirits associated with wisdom. Known across the Netherlands, Belgium, and parts of France, they were also called Juffers, or Dames Blanche, in French. The term Witter is often interpreted as wise, reflecting their role as respected herbalists and healers in ancient times. Originally honored at their graves, Vita Viven were believed to reside in sacred places and appear as mist or fog. They were seen as helpful spirits, though later Christian influences transformed their image into malevolent ghost witches. Similar to Germanic beliefs about Deesen, Land Whites, and Elves, the Vita Vivens mythology involves seeking aid from their spirits and parallels other folk traditions in Europe. In Macedonian folklore, the Nareknici are demonic beings believed to predict the destiny of newborns. Typically depicted as three women, they visit on the third night after a child's birth. The Nareknici are often portrayed as three sisters, two with malevolent intentions and one benevolent. The youngest sister's role is to counteract the curses cast by her evil siblings, thus shaping the child's future. In Scandinavian folklore, the term troll, known as trolder in Danish, refers to various kinds of supernatural beings resembling humans. They make appearances in ancient texts like the Edda, described as multi-headed monsters. Over time, trolls became characters in fairy tales, legends, and songs. Trolls have similarities to creatures in other cultures, like the Cyclopes in Homer's Odyssey. In Swedish folklore, they're often called Jetta, or giants, linked to the Norse Jotun. The exact origin of the word troll remains uncertain. These creatures are depicted in Scandinavian folk tales in diverse ways, but they're commonly portrayed as dim-witted and sluggish. The classic storyline involves a brave human outsmarting a troll through wit and courage. There are even legends where saints trick enormous trolls into constructing churches. Trolls come in various shapes and sizes, usually not pleasant to look at, with some having as many as nine heads. They inhabit different parts of the land, residing in mountains, under bridges, and even at the depths of lakes. Mountain-dwelling trolls are sometimes depicted as wealthy, amassing hordes of gold and silver in their cliff abodes. One notable figure is Dovreguben, a troll king who resides within the Dovre Mountains along with his court. The Wawel Dragon, also known as the Dragon of Wawel Hill, is a renowned figure in Polish legend. According to early accounts from the 13th century, this dragon terrorized the capital city of Krakow, founded by the legendary King Krak. The creature, which devoured cattle and people, was initially appeased with regular sacrifices of livestock. The dragon was ultimately defeated through a clever trick involving decoy cows filled with sulfur. The victory was attributed to the king's sons, but the younger prince, who killed his elder brother to claim the glory, was later banished. Subsequently, 
Princess Wanda took over the throne. Later accounts, such as a 15th century chronicle, swapped the names of the princes, making the elder prince Crack Jr. and the younger Lesh. These sources also credited the king with devising the sulphur strategy. By the 1597 chronicle of Marcin Bielski, the plan was attributed to a cobbler named Scub, and it was established that the Dragon's Cave was located beneath Wowl Castle on Wowl Hill along the Vistula River. The Santa Campania, a mythical belief in northwest Iberia, depicts a nighttime procession of the dead or tormented souls led by a living person. The leader, often unaware, is cursed to guide the procession each night until daybreak with no memory of the event. Witnesses may feel danger or see flickering lights. To break the curse, the leader must pass it to another encountered during the procession. Countermeasures include drawing Solomon's circle or performing warding symbols. The procession's gender depends on the parish's patron saint and its purpose is to announce death. In Romanian mythology, Strigoi are troubled spirits that rise from the grave and possess abilities such as shape-shifting into animals, becoming invisible and gaining vitality from the blood of their victims. They are often linked to the modern vampire legend popularized by Bram Stoker's Dracula. Strigoi can be living people under certain conditions, such as being the seventh child of the same sex in a family, living a sinful life, dying unmarried, being executed for perjury, committing suicide, or dying from a witch's curse. Strigoi are described as having a bald top of the head, avoiding garlic and onions, and having an elongated, hair-covered spine shaped like a tail. Strigoi are believed to cause droughts, steal milk from cows, ruin crops, and bring death. To combat them, rituals include searching their graves and using specific methods like striking the heart with an oak, yew, or ash branch, or piercing it with a nail or knife. Another method involved placing a seven-year-old boy on a white horse at midday near the graveyard to identify the vampire's resting place. In cases where a deceased person had red hair, additional precautions were taken, such as nailing the coffin shut or driving a stake through the corpse. Historical sources provide various preventive measures, including unearthing and beheading the corpse. Traditional beliefs also suggest that eating the meat of a pig killed on October 17th, the feast day of St. Ignatius, could guard against vampires. Baba Yaga is a complex figure in Slavic folklore, often depicted as a witch with dual roles. In some stories, she is a fearsome old woman who preys on children, while in others, she is a benevolent figure who aids heroes. Baba Yaga is closely linked with the forest and is known for her unique traits. She flies in a wooden mortar, uses a pestle as a weapon, and lives in a hut that stands on chicken legs. Her character embodies both danger and help, reflecting the ambivalence of nature and folklore. Unfortunately, I couldn't find any mythical creatures specifically from San Marino. If you know any, leave a comment below. Sava Savanovic is a prominent figure in Balkan and Serbian vampire folklore. According to legend, he lived in an old watermill on the Rogachika River in Zarozia village, Bajina Basta, where he preyed on millers, killing them and drinking their blood. While some accounts suggest that Petar Blagojevic, from Kisiljevo and who died in 1725, may have been the first Serbian vampire, Sava Savanovic is more widely recognized today as Serbia's most famous vampire. In Slovakian folklore, water demons are known as Vodnichlap, waterman, or Molek. These spirits are often depicted as malevolent beings inhabiting lakes and streams. One story from Dolny Kubin in Orava describes a peasant who witnesses a water demon chasing another for stealing his wife. 
the peasant sees a violent underwater battle and flees as the scene turns ominously red. Additionally, Slovak folklore includes tales about the Vodnik's pot, where water spirits are said to trap souls. In the village of Boki, a Vodnik is described as having a long beard and an ever-wet coat. Other accounts depict them with flowing hair or blazing eyes, and they are known to appear in various forms, including a little green boy or a man with the head of a black ram. Vodniks are believed to use ribbons to lure people, similar to their Czech counterparts. Their wives, often described as frog-like, can transform and interact with humans. In one tale, a frog-like being takes a woman as a godmother, later revealing pots that trap souls. When the woman disobeys and discovers her drowned children's souls trapped inside, she rescues them, leading to their miraculous revival. In Slovene folklore, the gold horn is a legendary white chamois buck or alpine ibex associated with Mount Triglav, Slovenia's highest peak. The legend, first recorded by Karl Deschmann in 1868, is well known in Slovenia, Austrian Carinthia, and Italian Friuli Venezia, Giulia. According to the tale, the gold horn's golden horns held the key to a hidden treasure in the mountains. A young hunter from the Trenta Valley, who was in love with a girl, was mocked when a wealthy Venetian merchant impressed her with jewellery. Desperate to win her back, the hunter, guided by the green hunter, set out to find the gold horn. They eventually found and shot the creature. As the gold horn staggered onto a rocky ledge, it ate magical triglav flowers that gave it immense life force. Despite the green hunter's attempts to prevent it, the gold horn, now empowered, charged at the hunter. The hunter, blinded by the gold horn's radiant horns, lost his balance and fell to his death, with his body later found by the river Soka. Duende is a humanoid figure with roots in Iberian, Ibero-American, and Latin American cultures. It's often likened to dwarves, gnomes, or leprechauns. The term duende in Spanish is believed to stem from the phrase doing o de casa, meaning master of the house. Alternatively, it might have connections to mythical beings from Visigoth or Swabian cultures, given its resemblance to the mischievous spirit known as the Tom Te in Swedish folklore, which inhabits dwellings. In Swedish folklore, the Stors Jura, literally the Great Lake Monster, is a legendary creature said to inhabit Lake Storsjorn in Jemtland, Sweden. First mentioned in a 1635 manuscript, the creature was described as a lake serpent, magically bound in the lake's depths by Ketel Runski, with the spell carved into the Froso Runa stone. Local legends later depicted the monster as a cat-headed creature with a black serpentine body created by two trolls. Eyewitness accounts from the 19th century and beyond have described it in various ways, including with a dog-like head. Despite differing descriptions, the Stors Jury remains a prominent figure in Swedish folklore and continues to intrigue those interested in cryptids and local legends. Mountain giants are primordial beings from folklore, known for their immense size and strength but simplistic nature. They are believed to inhabit caves, and their movements across the earth are said to have shaped valleys and rivers. The rivers are particularly associated with the tears of their mistreated wives and daughters. The giant's leader is Gargantua, also known as Old Gargi, while his daughter is named Bertha. Among these giants, Hotap is notorious for his predilection for consuming humans, and his companion, Shopper, represents the perils of excessive drinking. Shopper's influence led Hotap to drink himself to death, embodying the destructive effects of overindulgence. In Ukrainian folklore, Mavkas are female spirits of the forest, 
often depicted as beautiful but dangerous figures. They are believed to be the souls of girls who met tragic or untimely deaths, such as unchristened babies. Mavkas typically appear as young women who lure men into the woods, where they tickle them to death. They are said to lack reflections in water and do not cast shadows. A specific type of Mavka, the Niavka, is distinguished by its visible spine and internal organs. Mavkas and Niavkas live in forests, caves, or sheds, where they weave clothes from stolen flax and adorn themselves with flowers. They are associated with springtime celebrations and rituals, such as Pentecost, where they engage in dances and festivities. To prevent an unchristened baby's soul from becoming a Mavka, a ritual involving throwing a kerchief and saying, I baptize you, is performed during Pentecost. If not rescued, these souls are believed to become Mavkas and haunt the earth. In English folklore, Black Shuck is a ghostly black dog said to roam the coastline and countryside of East Anglia. Accounts of Black Shuck are part of the folklore of Norfolk, Suffolk, the Cambridgeshire Fens, and Essex, with descriptions of its appearance and nature varying widely. Some tales depict it as an omen of death, while in others it is described as companionable. The earliest recorded mention of Black Shuck is in an 1850 edition of the journal Notes and Queries by Reverend E. S. Taylor, who described Shuck the Dog Fiend as a black shaggy dog with fiery eyes and immense size believed to visit churchyards at midnight. Vatican City doesn't have any mythical creatures given its unique status. A jumbie is a mythological spirit or demon from Caribbean folklore, including Antigua and Barbuda. The term jumbi is used for all evil spirits. There are many types of jumbies, reflecting the Caribbean's diverse history and cultural mix, including influences from African, Amerindian, East Indian, Dutch, English, and Chinese myths. Different cultures have unique ideas about jumbies, but generally, they are believed to be the spirits of people who were evil in life and continue to do harm after death. Unlike typical ghost stories, which often describe spirits as misty figures, jumbies are seen as dark, shadowy beings. Nahuelito is a lake monster said to live in Nahuel Huapi Lake in Patagonia, Argentina. Similar to Nessie of Loch Ness, Nahuelito is named after its lake and described as a giant serpent, a large hump, or even a plesiosaur. Photos have supposedly shown its serpentine body or hump. The name Nahuelito means Yaguarete, a large wildcat from the Americas. The legend dates back to indigenous stories before European colonization. In 1897, Dr. Clemente Onelli, director of the Buenos Aires Zoo, began receiving reports about a strange creature in Patagonian lakes. In 1910, George Garrett saw a creature in Nahuel Huapi Lake, describing it as five to seven meters long and two meters above the water. His account, made public in 1922, led to the first organized search for Nahuelito. Since 1922, the Buenos Aires Zoo has tried to gather evidence of a plesiosaur in Patagonian lakes, but none has been found. The lake is now called Laguna del Plesiosario. In 1960, the Argentine Navy chased an unidentified underwater object in the lake for 18 days, linking it to Nahuelito. In 1988, photos of Nahuelito near Bariloche were published, with the photographer insisting it was not a log or wave, but the monster itself. The Chikchani is a legendary creature from Andros Island in the Bahamas. Described as three feet tall and resembling an ugly, furry or feathered owl, it is said to live in the forests. According to legend, treating a Chikchani well brings good luck, while mistreating it brings bad luck. Sightings of Chikchanis continue today. 
They are believed to make their nests by pulling several pine trees together, and formations of these trees have been reported. The Heartman is a creepy and menacing figure in Barbados folklore, often used to scare children into behaving. According to the legend, the Hartman targets disobedient kids, carving out their hearts and feeding them to the devil. He is depicted as a skeletal man with cow legs, dressed in all black with chains, weapons, and a large black hat. The Hartman drives a black hearse, frequents churches and parishes, and sometimes gives candy to children to lure them close enough to attack. Tata Duende is a supernatural creature from Creole folklore, known for protecting animals and the jungle. This spirit is famous in Maya and Mestizo cultures, and parents often use stories of Tata Duende to scare children into behaving, as it is said to lure kids into the jungle. Farmers would blame strange farm occurrences, like intricately braided horse manes on this creature. Descriptions of the Tata Duende vary, but it is typically depicted as a three-foot-tall figure with a wide-brimmed hat, sometimes red, and animal skin clothing. It has backward-facing feet and no thumbs. Children are warned to hide their thumbs if they encounter it, or Duende might bite them off. It is also said to whistle distinctively, smoke cigars, and play the guitar. A calica are mythological creatures from Bolivia, sometimes referred to as weather fairies. They are believed to control the weather and live in caves. These elusive beings are rarely seen, but when they do appear, they take the form of small, wizened men. Kurupira is often depicted as a small, red-haired being with backward-facing feet. His hair can also ignite and turn into fire. It is said to inhabit the forests, protecting them and the creatures within. Kurupira is known for its mischievous behavior, particularly targeting hunters and loggers who disrespect the forest. It may lead them astray or create illusions to confuse them. Despite its mischievous nature, Kurupira is also considered a guardian of wildlife and defender of the natural world. The Wendigo legend comes from the Algonquin-speaking tribes in North America, including nations such as the Pequot, Narragansett, and Wampanoag of New England. It's also found in the folklore of Canadian First Nations like the Ojibwe, Chippewa, Potawatomi, and Cree. Some tribal cultures see the Wendigo as pure evil, like the Boogeyman. Others believe it's a human taken over by evil spirits as punishment for bad behavior, such as selfishness, gluttony, or cannibalism. Once someone becomes a Wendigo, there's little hope for them. According to Native American folklore, the Wendigo prowls the woods on dark winter nights, searching for human flesh and luring victims with its creepy ability to mimic human voices. When people went missing in the woods, the Wendigo was often blamed. Descriptions of the Wendigo vary, but most say it's about 15 feet tall with a thin, haggard body reflecting its endless hunger for human flesh. In his book, The Manatus, First Nation Canadian author Basil Johnston described the Wendigo as a gaunt skeleton with a strange and eerie odour of decay and death. The Wendigo legend has been passed down through generations. One popular story tells of a Wendigo that was defeated by a little girl who boiled tallow and threw it on the creature, making it small and weak enough to be attacked. Scholars think the Wendigo represents real-world issues like starvation and violence. Its connection to a possessed human may symbolize how these communities view certain taboos or negative behaviors. It's clear that these monsters can take different shapes and forms. Some Native American myths suggest that crossing certain lines can turn people into hideous beings. As Johnston wrote, turning Wendigo can become a reality when someone resorts to destruction in difficult times. The Basilisco Chilote is a creature from Chilota mythology, originating in the Chiloé archipelago of southern Chile.
It is described as having the crest of a rooster and the body of a serpent. Hatched from an egg incubated by a rooster, it lives in a hole dug under a house and feeds on the phlegm and saliva of the inhabitants, causing them to dehydrate and die. To kill the Basilisco chilote, you must burn the egg as soon as it is laid and kill the rooster that laid it. If the creature has already hatched, the only way to destroy it is by burning down the house where it resides. Tunda is a myth from the Pacific coastal region of Colombia and Ecuador, particularly among the Afro-Colombian community. This shape-shifting entity resembles a human woman and lures people into the forests to keep them there. Tunda can change its shape to appear as a loved one, like a child's mother, to lure victims into the forest. It feeds them shrimp to keep them docile, a state known as entundamiento. Despite its shape-shifting abilities, the tunda always has a wooden leg shaped like a molinillo, a utensil for stirring hot drinks. It cleverly hides this defect from its victims. In some versions, tunda appears to male loggers or hunters as a beautiful woman, luring them away to reveal its hideous nature and either suck their blood or devour them like a wild animal. La Chegua is characterized by its face, which resembles a decomposing horse. This myth is prevalent in rural areas, although its actions are similar to those in the rest of Mexico and Central America, such as bathing at night. La Chegua sometimes appears among herds of horses, causing panic by mounting one of them. Other versions of the story say that La Chegua appears on roads as a beautiful woman, targeting womanizers or drunkards. She asks for a ride, and her appearance is captivating. A young woman with an oval face, large black eyes, long curly hair, red lips, and a divine voice. She may be dressed in black, white, a vaporous pink dress, or a luxurious period gown. Legend has it that no man can resist her beauty and sweet request. Once a man gives her a ride, she eventually transforms into a monster with a horse's head. La Chegua also appears to men walking late at night, luring them with her sweetness before revealing her true form. She can also appear as a crying child by the road or near a river. When someone picks up the child, it transforms into the horse-faced monster. The origin story in Costa Rica suggests that La Chegua was a young woman cursed by her mother after she tried to hit her for refusing her permission to go to a party. Some believe La Chegua is a demonic manifestation. In the province of Guanacaste, La Chegua also appears at dances and festivals, flirting with men. She leads them to a secluded spot under a Guanacaste tree, where she transforms when the man tries to kiss her. According to legend, the Mother of Waters is an enormous snake, as thick as a palm tree, with two horn-like protrusions on its head and uniquely thick scales that repel bullets. It inhabits rivers and lagoons that remain perennial as long as it resides there. It is believed to have an exceptionally long lifespan, potentially spanning hundreds of years. Attempts to harm or capture the mother of waters are said to result in the death of the perpetrator. The creature is feared for its immense size and strength capable of swallowing a whole calf when hungry. Folklore warns of its formidable presence and the dire consequences of encountering or disturbing it. In Dominican folklore, the Bacar is a mythical creature or artificial being created through witchcraft. Legend has it that by making a pact, one can gain wealth and protection from this entity. Although often depicted as resembling a cow, the Bacar can transform into various domestic animals like oxen, bulls, or even cats, while some tales claim it has wings or a mishmash of different animal parts. Scholars suggest it might be a product of collective imagination, prevalent among the lower classes due to lack of understanding. The pact to create a Bacar typically demands a soul as sacrifice, which varies from the firstborn child 
to any child of the pact maker or even the pact maker themselves. According to folklore, the Baka claims a soul nightly from those who dare enter its territory after designated hours, starting with lesser souls until it fulfills its quota. Upon the owner's death, the Baka may pass to the eldest son, closest relative, or the next owner of the land. It's believed the Baka is confined to its land during daylight hours and can only leave if exercised by a professional priest. The Chiguapa is a mythical creature from Dominican folklore, known for its human-like form with brown or dark blue skin, backward-facing feet, and long, glossy hair covering its body. These creatures are said to reside in the high mountains of the Dominican Republic and are nocturnal by nature. Due to their peculiar footprints, which don't reveal their direction of movement, Chiguapas are considered mysterious and elusive. It's believed that making eye contact with them can lead to permanent bewitchment, and their only vocalization is described as a whine or chirp. Chiguapas are seen as magical beings, captivating in appearance, yet often viewed as dangerous. They are sometimes compared to mermaids, beautiful, yet potentially cruel and deceitful. Legends suggest they can lure unsuspecting travelers into the forest under the guise of romance, only to harm them afterward. Some tales mention benevolent chiguapas who mean no harm, but evidence supporting this is scarce. According to law, capturing a chiguapa requires tracking them at night during a full moon, accompanied by a black-and-white polydactylic dog known as a cinqueño dog. Chuzalongo is a mythical creature from Ecuadorian folklore dwelling in the Andean cliffs. Its name in Quechua translates to seductive and evil child. Legend offers various origins for the Chuzalongo. One version suggests it could be the offspring of Urkuyaya and Urkumama, symbolic children of the hill. Another, more earthly version speculates it may stem from incestuous relationships among family members or between siblings. Historically, some believe the Chuzalongo myth emerged during the Spanish conquest, possibly used by Creoles to evade responsibility for children born from unions with Amerindians. Interestingly, the creature is described with blonde hair and blue eyes. In appearance, the Chuzalongo is consistently portrayed as humanoid, resembling a small child around six years old, with long hair, often blonde and pale skin. Some versions depict it with backward-turned feet to evade pursuit. Curiously, it's said to carry an unusually large penis, sometimes mistaken for an umbilical cord. Symbolically, the Chuzalongo is seen as a collective offspring of all women, adding a layer of incestuous symbolism to its existence. Known for its insatiable sexual appetite, it boldly seduces or rapes women, often fatally assaulting them afterward. Legends vary on whether it feeds on blood, but agree it possesses lethal powers, capable of killing with a mere gust of wind when angered. Cuyanqua is a legendary figure from Izalco, El Salvador, known for its unusual appearance, a large creature with the lower body of a snake and the upper body of a pig. According to local tradition, the Cuyanqua appears to announce the arrival of rain, sometimes appearing in groups. At nightfall near Izalco, people have reported hearing eerie croaking or shrieking, accompanied by tremors underground, which locals attribute to the Cuyanqua. This phenomenon often causes panic, prompting residents to stay indoors early in the evening, especially near rivers and ravines where the creature is said to roam. Those who claim to have encountered the Kuyankua describe it as a shocking sight, causing some to faint or lose their ability to speak temporarily. Folklore advises that if one encounters the Kuyankua, remaining calm, closing one's eyes, and trusting in God, is the best course of action. The Kuyankua is believed to still inhabit areas around the Atacazol Resort, moving along streams, coiling around trees, and occasionally disappearing from sight. 
Legends also suggest that where the Kuyankwa rests, springs of clean and fresh water emerge, contributing to the presence of beautiful springs in local municipalities. La Diables originates from the story of an enslaved African woman who made a pact with the devil for eternal beauty. According to legend, La Diables appears as a stunningly beautiful woman with an elegant poise and captivating figure. However, her face remains hidden under a large brimmed hat, and her long dress conceals a cow hoof in place of one foot. She walks with one foot on the road and the other in the grass beside it, emitting a scent of both exquisite perfume and deathly decay. La Diablesse ensnares unsuspecting male victims by casting spells on them, leading them deep into the forest where she then vanishes. Confused and disoriented, her victims often meet tragic ends, falling into ravines, rivers, or becoming prey to wild animals. To break the spell of La Diablesse, you'll have to perform a ritual. One must turn their clothing inside out, light a sacred candle, and walk home backwards, away from the last place where she was encountered. The Cadejo, a supernatural creature from Central American folklore, manifests as both a benevolent white dog and a malevolent black dog, distinguished by their eye color, blue when calm, white Cadejo, and red when aggressive, black Cadejo. These spirits roam isolated roads at night, offering protection or posing threats to travelers. The white Cadejo safeguards travelers from harm during their journeys, while the black Cadejo, sometimes likened to an incarnation of the devil, attempts to harm or kill them. Described as large, shaggy dogs with glowing eyes and goat's hooves, they exude a strong, goat-like smell when near. Folklore warns that facing or speaking to the Cadejo can lead to insanity. The Warakabra tiger is a cryptid felid reported from the mountains of central west Guyana. It is described as resembling a jaguar, but with variations in size and coloration. One account describes it as slim and mouse-colored, while another mentions a gray hue with a mark above its eyes. What sets the Warakabra tiger apart is its unusual behavior. It is said to hunt in packs, potentially consisting of up to a hundred individuals. These packs reportedly include two large animals and several smaller ones of varying sizes, as observed from tracks found in the area. The creature emits a loud howl, similar to the call of the grey-winged trumpeter bird, from which its local name, Warakabra, is derived. It is rarely seen and reputedly fearful of water and dogs, fleeing from the barking of dogs but showing no fear of fire. During the rainy season, the Warakabra tiger inhabits mountainous regions. However, during the dry season, when not hindered by streams, hunger drives them to descend into lowlands. Recorded sightings of the Warakabra tiger are scarce, with only four instances where the creatures were actually observed. In Haitian folklore, the Lugaru is the island's version of the werewolf, intertwined with voodoo practices and beliefs. Unlike traditional werewolves seen in other cultures as distinct species, the Lugaru is described as a human who practices dark voodoo arts. They use the skin of an animal to transform into monstrous forms, such as half-wolf or half-bird, enabling them to commit evil deeds under the cover of night. Similar to the concept of the North American skinwalker, which involves individuals using supernatural means to assume animal forms, the Lugaru's power lies in their ability to transform between human and animal shapes. This dual nature makes them formidable and dangerous, often leading to fear and suspicion within Haitian communities. The Picudo is a legendary cryptid from Honduras, known for its nocturnal habits and blood-feeding behavior, much like the infamous chupacabra. It prowls during late-night hours, taking advantage of its stealth 
to avoid detection and capture in the country's mountainous and forested terrain. Described by witnesses as having a dog-like body with a pig-like face distinguished by an elongated trunk, the picudo possesses a powerful neurotoxin. This toxin is emitted through its trunk, capable of paralyzing both animals and humans, rendering them unconscious while it feeds on their blood without their awareness. The creature targets cattle corrals and occasionally houses with open doors, silently approaching its victims and administering its paralyzing toxin before extracting blood through its mouth. Its unsettling appearance and stealthy behavior contribute to its fearsome reputation among those who claim to have encountered it. In Jamaican folklore, a duppy is a ghost or spirit that inhabits various natural settings, such as bamboo thickets and cottonwood groves. These spirits are believed to be the souls of deceased individuals, but exhibit characteristics similar to old-world shapeshifters and tricksters. Duppies are active from 7 in the evening until 5 in the morning, sometimes appearing even at noon. Their mischievous activities range from simple pranks to more malevolent acts like arson, beating, poisoning, and stoning. However, they are believed to be powerless against twins and individuals born with a call. Protection from duppies includes using a left-handed crack with a tarred whip and burning specific herbs. The most notorious is the rolling calf, a shapeshifter appearing as a hornless goat with one human front leg, one horse leg, and two goat hind legs. Its eyes glow like fire and flames emit from its nostrils. Often seen with a rattling chain collar, it can also appear as a cat, dog, pig, bull, or horse. Butchers, murderers, and obia men are said to become rolling calves in the afterlife, using their newfound powers to harm others. Rolling calves emerge on moonless nights to raid cattle pens for molasses and cause mischief. They blow bad breath on victims, but can be repelled by flogging with a tarred whip or sticking an open knife into the ground. Remarkably, they fear the moon to a superstitious degree. Encountering a rolling calf requires swift departure from the area, as they are relentless in pursuit of revenge for any thwarted attempt to ward them off. Lechuza, from Mexican folklore, is a hag who appears as a normal woman by day, but transforms into an owl-like monster at night. This creature possesses formidable powers, including mimicking voices, controlling the weather, and even causing death with her piercing screech. As a ravenous predator, the lechuza preys on humans, making encounters perilous. Survivors of such encounters attribute their escape to exploiting the lechuza's vulnerability to salt, which is said to ward off or repel her effectively. The Careta Nagua is described as a bewitched wooden cart that emerges at night, pulled by two emaciated oxen with tight hides over their rib cages. Leading this spectral procession is Death himself, often depicted as skeletal or, alternatively, two hooded skeletons carrying candles. The cart's wooden wheels emit a terrifying creaking sound so spine-chilling that no one dares to peek out of their windows when it passes by. Legend has it that this eerie manifestation dates back to the Conquest era, reflecting the profound fear and trauma experienced by indigenous peoples. Spanish soldiers, often accompanied by ox carts, raided villages at night, capturing inhabitants for forced labor in distant silver mines. The unfamiliar noise of the carts was interpreted by the natives as a manifestation of nocturnal spirits disrupting their peaceful villages. Elders claim the Careta Nagua foretells death when it rolls through deserted streets, accompanied by distant howls of dogs. Those who claim to have seen it report suffering from fever or fainting, while others are said to have died from sheer fright at the sight of this terrifying spectre. 
Additional accounts describe the cart's supernatural abilities, such as its inexplicable ability to vanish at corners, only to reappear on different streets. La Tula Vieja is a haunting figure from the folklore of Costa Rica and Panama. Her legend tells of a once beautiful woman who, after secretly bearing a child out of wedlock and committing infanticide by drowning, incurred the wrath of God. In punishment for her actions, she was transformed into a grotesque and terrifying creature. According to various versions of the legend, La Tule Vieja is described as a short, stout woman with a distorted appearance. She has swollen breasts that often leak milk, and her hair is tangled and unkempt. Her physical form is sometimes augmented with bird or bat wings, reminiscent of a harpy, and her legs are depicted as being inverted, similar to those of a bird of prey. Additionally, swarms of ants are said to follow her, feeding on the milk that drips from her breasts. In certain regions, La Tula Vieja's legend has merged with that of La Llorona, another infamous figure in Latin American folklore. In these interpretations, she is portrayed as seeking out babies to nurse with her milk, occasionally resorting to abduction to satisfy her dark desires. Some narratives also present her as an avenging spirit, targeting promiscuous men and negligent fathers as her victims. To ward off La Tula Vieja's malevolent influence, various protective measures are suggested in different versions of the legend. One common method is reciting a specific prayer believed to repel her and keep her at bay. The Pombero is a significant figure in Paraguay mythology and cultural heritage. This mythical being is believed to be a small, ugly, humanoid creature with distinctive features that vary slightly depending on local accounts. Generally, he is described as having short arms, hairy hands and feet, and a stature that allows him to move stealthily through the forest. One of Pombero's key attributes is his nocturnal nature, earning him the title the Man of the Night. He primarily inhabits rural areas, especially forests or abandoned houses, and is known for his mischievous behavior. Pombero is considered a harmless troublemaker who delights in pranks such as releasing cattle, stealing eggs and chickens, frightening horses, and causing other forms of agricultural mischief. He's also credited with impregnating single women through supernatural means, often resulting in the birth of hairy and unusual-looking children. Despite his mischievous tendencies, Pombero is not typically perceived as malevolent. In fact, he is sometimes regarded as a protector of the natural world, particularly birds. It's believed that he can imitate birdsong and may intervene to prevent harm to them, especially from children who hunt them with slingshots. To appease Pombero and avoid his disruptive actions, traditional practices involve leaving offerings for him, such as cigars, rum, or honey. These gifts are meant to placate him and deter him from causing harm. In some areas, repeated offerings can even lead to a friendly relationship with Pombero, where he may protect one's home and belongings in return. The Jariacha is a Peruvian creature that emerges at night, known for its long neck and glowing eyes. It preys exclusively on those who have committed incest or other serious sins against their spiritual kin. Its presence is heralded by a chilling call that echoes through the hills. Ja, 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 ja. This eerie sound terrifies villagers who lock their doors in fear. In the aftermath of its cry, tension grips the community as they suspect one among them is guilty of taboo acts. The parish priest condemns the presence of this supposed spawn of Satan, promising divine punishment. Eventually, the culprit is exposed and publicly punished in a ceremony known as an auto de fe. Being called a jariacha is the gravest accusation one can face in this community. Unfortunately, I couldn't find any mythical creatures or cryptids for these countries. If you know any, leave a comment down below. The Sukuyant 
is a figure known for its eerie transformations and blood-sucking nocturnal habits. By day, they disguise themselves as elderly individuals, but at night, they shed their wrinkled skin and transform into fireballs, soaring through the sky in search of victims. Able to slip through tiny openings like cracks and keyholes, they feed on human blood, leaving behind bruised marks. Legend has it that if a sukuyant drains too much blood, the victim may perish or even transform into another sukuyant. These creatures are said to dabble in black magic, exchanging blood for sinister powers with Basil, a demon residing in the silk cotton tree. To uncover a sukuyan, tradition advises surrounding the home with heaps of rice or placing it at crossroads, forcing the creature to count every grain, revealing its true nature. To destroy one, coarse salt is said to be fatal when placed in the mortar alongside the discarded skin, preventing the creature from reclaiming it. Asima is a vampiric witch resembling an elderly person with red eyes and downturned toes. At night, it sheds its skin, folding it neatly away, and transforms into a glowing blue ball of light akin to a corpse candle. This spectral form allows it to slip into homes through the tiniest openings, seeking victims with a taste for their blood, which it consumes repeatedly until they perish. Bitter-tasting blood repels the acema, but those it favors display telltale red and blue marks at bite sites. To deter an acema, locals consume bitter herbs like garlic or strategically place sesame seeds, rice, and owl talons near doors. The acema, compelled to count these items, may become frustrated enough to abandon its hunt before sunrise, when sunlight can destroy it if its skin remains exposed. Alternatively, discovering and salting its hidden skin causes it to perish in daylight, unable to wear the shriveled hide. The Duan is a mysterious entity from Trinidad and Tobago with distinctive backwards-facing feet and knees, and a face hidden beneath a large straw hat save for a small mouth. They are notorious for mimicking familiar voices, especially those of parents, to lure children into the forest. Mischievous by nature, Duans delight in playing tricks, raiding gardens, and leading children astray until they are lost in the woods. Trinidad and Tobago folklore draws heavily from African roots, influenced by French, Spanish, and English cultures. Elements of African religious traditions have significantly shaped the island's supernatural beliefs, often blurring the lines between myth and religious practice. Stories featuring Duins serve as cautionary tales designed to impart moral lessons to children. Bigfoot is an alleged ape-human-like hybrid creature of North American folklore. Bigfoot is often described as a large, muscular and bipedal human or ape-like creature covered in black, dark brown or dark reddish hair. The Charua people were a significant indigenous group in present-day Uruguay, Argentina and Brazil. Despite the impact of European colonization erasing much of their culture, insights into their beliefs, mythology and rituals have been preserved through oral traditions, historical records, and archaeological discoveries. One of their mythical creatures was Emboi Tui, depicted as a serpent-like creature adorned with colorful feathers. As the guardian of water sources, Emboi Tui was believed to dwell in rivers and lakes. The Charua people honored Emboi Tui as a symbol of life and abundance, conducting rituals to seek its blessing and ensure the continuous flow of fresh water. The Waco are formidable animal spirits from the folklore of the Cueva people of Colombia and Venezuela. Resembling pacas with distinctive spots and long, menacing fangs, they inhabit caves that they intricately dig with numerous exits and hiding spots. 
Known for their carnivorous and anthropophagous nature, Waco pose a grave danger to anyone who ventures into their caves. Their eerie call warns of their presence. Interestingly, they have a peculiar aversion. They do not pursue individuals who are naked. Legends recount daring encounters with Waco. In one tragic tale, a Quiver man, abandoned by his wife, recklessly dug into a Waco nest against all warnings. His swift demise came as the Waco swiftly devoured him after he disturbed their lair. In contrast, another man ventured into a Waco cave driven by vengeance for his pregnant wife, who had fallen victim to these creatures. With fierce determination, he succeeded in exterminating the entire nest of Waco, avenging his wife's death, but at great personal risk. The Siranis are found in the dense areas of Kabul and Zabulistan. The name comes from the Greek siren, though the Siranis has changed a lot from its original form. Initially, the Siranis was thought to be a sea creature with seven openings in its mouth, using its seven toes to play its snout like an instrument. This description later matched that of the Kaknus or Argun, which was also known by the same name. Serena also referred to a system of walls with holes that mimicked the Sirani's call, used by the Byzantines to attract and catch it. Siranus is described as a land-based carnivorous mammal with 12 openings in its snout. When it breathes, these holes make a pleasant sound like a flute, inspiring musical instruments. A Siranis uses its musical talent to lure prey, creating a melody that mesmerizes animals, making them easy targets. If none of the animals are suitable, it emits a loud screech to scare them away. Arales are winged, dog-like beings in Armenian mythology tasked with the unique ability to lick the wounds of fallen heroes, thereby resurrecting them. They are closely associated with the legend of King Ara the Handsome, where the Assyrian queen Semiramis calls upon them to revive Ara after he falls in battle. References to Arales persist in Armenian history, such as in the account attributed to Faustus of Byzantium, where Mushech Mamikonian's relatives placed his body on a tower in hopes of the Arales' reviving him. These references suggest that belief in Arales endured into the Christianized period of Armenia in the 4th and 5th centuries. Meshe Adam, also known as the Tree Man, is a spirit in Azerbaijani mythology that lives in mountainous forests. These spirits are depicted as hairy creatures with human faces and a strong odor. They search for food at night, sneaking into gardens and orchards while wearing discarded human clothes. Some researchers believe the Mesha Adam is a version of the Yeti legend. The forest man is a common figure in Caucasus folklore, linked to the traditions of the sovereign of the game in the region, similar to the Scandinavian Skogsra and the Russian wood sprite Leshi. Baba Daria is a mythical character popular among sea workers like divers, sailors, and fishermen. The name, combining Persian words Baba, father, and Daria, sea, reflects his connection to the sea. Seafarers believed Baba Daria was a jinn who would sneak onto ships between evening and dawn prayers to kidnap and eat sailors and sabotage the ships. To protect themselves, they assigned guards to watch the ship. If the guards heard Baba Daria, they would shout, bring the flag and the stick, scaring him away. He was described as a huge, strong man who only appeared in the dark. Despite his strength, he had a notable weakness. His hand had only four fingers, making it hard for him to grasp things. The Nishi, meaning night, lure their victims into secluded areas by mimicking the voice of a loved one. They strike only at night and only if the victim responds to their call, leading the victim into a trance-like state and forcing them to follow the voice until it vanishes. Folklore says 
the Nishi can only call their victims twice, so if a third call is heard, it's not from a Nishi. Some tantrics are believed to summon the Nishi to harm others. The Nishi's voice is known as Nishia Dark, Call of the Night Spirit. An old superstition claims that sleepwalking is also caused by the Nishi. The Druk is a dragon that appears on Bhutan's flag and coat of arms, symbolizing the country's identity and mythology. In Bhutanese culture, the Druk is linked with thunder and lightning, seen as a powerful and benevolent creature. Legend says it was the emblem of Bhutan's founder, Ngawang Namgyal. On the flag, the Druk holds jewels representing the nation's wealth and prosperity. Its white color stands for purity and loyalty, and its snarling mouth represents the strength and courage of the Bhutanese people. The flag's yellow and orange background symbolizes Buddhism and Bhutan's position between India and China. Galap is a mythical creature resembling a dragon with a long, scaly body and the head, with horn, of a water buffalo. It roams the Tutong River, especially around Tanjong Maya and Lubok Maranti, attracted by the abundant monkey population. The Galap's lair is believed to be near Pankalanjalur. Merenkong Vial are beings in Cambodian folklore similar to Western elves, known for guarding animals. These small, child-sized spirits are playful and mischievous. Offerings are often left for them when seeking their assistance. Originally, Merenkong Vial were seen as nomadic jungle guardians of wild animals, especially herding animals like elephants. Hunters, farmers, and mahouts left offerings to gain their favor for luck in hunting, capturing animals, or protecting crops. Today, they are considered supernatural guardians linked to people, places, or institutions, providing protection and guidance through telepathy or dreams. While adults can't see them, children aged 6 to 14 who are pure of heart might, and many Cambodians recall seeing them in childhood. Shenlong is a spirit dragon in Chinese mythology, known as the dragon god of storms and master of rain. He is as important as other mythical dragons like Tianlong, celestial dragon, Zhulong, dragon of eruption, Qinglong, azure dragon, and Yinglong, responsive dragon. Shenlong, with his azure scales, controls storms, clouds, and rain, essential for agriculture. People in China, Japan, Korea, and Vietnam are careful not to offend him, as his anger can bring bad weather, droughts, floods, or thunderstorms. Symbolizing a high rank, Shenlong's image appears in the splendid robes and regalia of Chinese emperors. He is also depicted with five claws, a feature of the imperial dragon. For centuries, Shenlong has been celebrated in Chinese festivals. In Greek mythology, Cyprian centaurs were a unique tribe of centaurs living on the island of Cyprus. These centaurs originated when Zeus attempted to copulate with Aphrodite on Cyprus. Aphrodite evaded him, causing Zeus's seed to spill onto the earth, personified by Gaia, leading to the birth of these centaurs. Among them, twelve influential Cyprian centaurs were also river spirits who guarded the infant Dionysus. Hera later transformed them into bull-horned centaurs out of spite. Unlike the traditional Thessalian centaurs, Cyprian centaurs had distinctive bull-like horns and were associated more with fertility than virility. Though potentially less savage than their Thessalian counterparts, they retained a bestial nature, evident when Dionysus easily recruited them for his army to assault India on Zeus's command. In Georgian mythology and folklore, the Devi are giant, malicious creatures resembling ogres. These beings are covered in hair, have horns, and possess multiple heads, ranging from three to a hundred. The more heads a Devi has, the stronger he is. Typically, seven or nine Devi brothers live together in underground groups. They survive through hunting and cattle breeding. Additionally, they are notorious for abducting beautiful women. 
Ichadhari Nag, female Ichadhari Nagin, are mythical shape-shifting cobras in Indian folklore, devoted devotees of Shiva. A regular cobra becomes an Ichadhari Nag, male shape-shifting cobra, or Ichadhari Naagin, female shape-shifting cobra, after 100 years of penance. Blessed by Lord Shiva, they gain a human form, the ability to shape-shift into any creature and can live for over a century without aging. These shapeshifters possess a valuable jewel called Nagmani, which has the power to revive its owner. Many people have died from snake bites trying to steal the Nagmani. If a Nag or Nagin is killed, their eyes capture the image of their killer. Their partner or family can identify and seek revenge against the killer using this image. When a Nag or Nagin hears the sound of a bean, a wind instrument used by snake charmers, they lose control and must reveal their true form. The realm of these creatures is called Naglok, consisting of various clans ruled by a Nagraj, king, or Nagrani, queen. Their enemies include the mongoose, eagle, and peafowl. Vive Gombel is a female supernatural being or vengeful ghost in Javanese mythology, known for kidnapping children. This myth is used to encourage children to be cautious and stay home at night. Traditionally, Vive Gombel is depicted as a woman with long, hanging breasts, but modern depictions also include vampire-like fangs. The name Vive Gombel comes from an event in Bukit Gombel Semarang, as told in ancient folklore. Long ago, a married couple lived there. After years of marriage, the husband realized his wife was barren and stopped loving her, neglecting her, and having an affair. When she discovered the affair, she became furious and killed him. The angry neighbors chased her from the village, and in despair, she committed suicide. Her vengeful spirit became Viwe Gombel. According to Sundanese folklore, she lives in the crown of the Arenga Pinata Palm, where she keeps the children she abducts. She doesn't harm them. Instead, she cares for them lovingly until their parents repent for neglecting or mistreating them. Once the parents change their ways, she returns the children. The Saimur is a benevolent mythical bird from Persian mythology and literature. It shares traits with other mythological birds, such as the phoenix and the humor. This figure appears throughout Iranian art and literature, as well as in the iconography of Georgia, medieval Armenia, and other regions influenced by Persian culture. In Iranian art, the Simur is depicted as a colossal bird capable of carrying an elephant or a whale. It often has the body of a peacock, the head of a dog, and the claws of a lion, and sometimes features a human face. The simmer is inherently kind, and being part mammal, it nurses its young. It has a natural aversion to snakes and prefers habitats near water. Its feathers are sometimes described as copper-colored. While originally portrayed as a dog bird, later depictions show it with a human or dog head. Iranian legends claim the simmer is so ancient it has witnessed the world's destruction three times and possesses the knowledge of all ages. In some tales, the Simurg lives for 1,700 years before burning itself in flames, akin to the phoenix. Jinn are invisible creatures from early pre-Islamic Arabia and later Islamic culture. Like humans, jinn are accountable for their actions and can be either believers, Muslims, or disbelievers, kafir, depending on their acceptance of God's guidance. They are neither inherently good nor evil, reflecting a blend of various pagan beliefs integrated into Islam. In Islamic belief, jinn are distinct from God, emphasizing the monotheistic principle of tawhid, oneness of God. They are subject to God's judgment and afterlife, and their worship or seeking protection from them is condemned by the Quran. Jinn are generally invisible, 
but are believed to have subtle bodies and can shapeshift into forms like cockroaches, snakes, scorpions, lizards, or humans. They might engage in sexual relations with humans and produce offspring. When injured, jinn often seek revenge or possess the attacker's body, which may require exorcism. Jinn are featured on charms and talismans and are called upon for protection or magical aid, often under the guidance of a king. Many people use amulets with God's name to protect against jinn. Although some past Muslim scholars had mixed views on jinn, contemporary scholarship increasingly links them to idolatry. And a fun fact, according to Wikipedia, 55% of Muslims from Iraq affirm a belief in the existence of jinn. A golem is an anthropomorphic being in Jewish folklore made from inanimate matter, typically clay or mud. The earliest golem stories are found in early Jewish texts. The Talmud, Tractate Sanhedrin 38b, describes Adam as initially being a golem, formed from dust into a shapeless husk. While golems are created from mud by figures of authority, they are not truly human. One key limitation of early golems was their inability to speak, as illustrated in Sanhedrin 65b, where a golem created by Rava fails to respond when spoken to, leading to the remark, you were created by the sages, return to your dust. The Raiju is a legendary creature in Japanese mythology associated with lightning and thunder, often depicted as a white-blue wolf or dog wrapped in lightning. It may also take the form of various other animals, such as a tanuki, leopard, fox, or weasel, among others. The Raiju is believed to be the companion of Raijin, the Shinto god of lightning. Typically calm and harmless, the Raiju becomes agitated during thunderstorms, leaping about in trees, fields, and even buildings. It is said to scratch trees struck by lightning with its claws. One of the Raiju's peculiar behaviors is sleeping in human navels, which prompts Raijin to shoot lightning arrows at it to wake it up, potentially harming the person hosting the creature. In folklore, a ghoul is a demon-like creature or monstrous humanoid, often linked to graveyards and eating human flesh. Ghouls are typically depicted as more malevolent and repulsive than goblins. The concept originates from pre-Islamic Arabian religion and has evolved in modern fiction to denote a specific type of monster. The term ghoul is also used derogatorily to describe someone who takes pleasure in the macabre or works directly with death, such as a grave digger or grave robber. Jestirnak, meaning Copper Nail is a malevolent female demon in Kazakh mythology and among some neighboring Turkic peoples. Often depicted as a beautiful young woman with a copper nose and claws, Jestirnak combines incredible strength with a piercing, deadly scream that can kill birds and small animals. Unlike European vampires, Jestirnak is not deterred by silver. She adorns herself with gold and silver jewelry. She hides her long metal claws under her sleeves and uses her cold, unblinking gaze to hypnotize her victims. Once they fall asleep, she attacks with her claws, draining their blood. Jestirnak is known for her vengeful nature. If she is killed, her husband, the Sorrel, seeks revenge. If he is also killed, their orphan children will haunt the killer. Hemarat al-Gaila is a monstrous creature with the body of a human female, but the neck and head of a donkey, typically cream-colored with red markings. This beast spends most of the day sleeping, but wakes at noon to hunt. Unlike other predators, Hemarat al-Gaila preys on children who play outside in the sun. She hides in the shadows, waiting for the right moment when no adults are present. Once she spots her victims, she snatches them and takes them to her lair, where she feeds on them. Sometimes, she returns their bodies to the spot where she captured them. Gun'ana is a prominent solar deity in Turkic mythology, 
often revered as the Sun Mother. In Kazakh and Kyrgyz cultures, she is seen as a goddess of life, fertility, warmth and health, and is also a patroness of the unfortunate, particularly orphans. Gun Anna resides on the seventh level of the sky and played a role in the creation of Earth, as the sun's rays were used by Tengri, the all-encompassing god of heaven, to form the world. These rays are viewed as connecting the sun with the spirits of plants, animals, and humans. Devotees of Gunana face the sunrise when praying to her. The Fire Naga, or Lord of Naga, are mythical serpent-like beings believed to dwell in the Mekong River and its estuaries. Sightings of these creatures are often linked to oarfish, which have long, red crests but live at great depths far from the Mekong. People in both Laos and Thailand attribute the Naga Fireball's phenomenon to these creatures. In Thai folklore, Fire Naga are semi-divine beings with supernatural abilities, rooted in Buddhist and Hindu traditions. The Kamchanod Forest in Udon Thani, Thailand, is considered a sacred boundary between the human world and the netherworld, and is frequently associated with Naga lore. This forest is also thought to be a site of hauntings and is deeply revered. Shan folklore from the Nanzhao Kingdom, which included parts of present-day Yunnan in China, also describes the Naga as inhabiting Erhai Lake and being responsible for the creation of the Mekong River. Abu Aikis, meaning the man with a bag, is a figure similar to the bogeyman, portrayed as a man with a sack on his back who carries naughty children away. If you're interested in the subject, I have a video where I talk about cultural variants of the boogeyman. Pontianak is a vengeful spirit in Southeast Asian folklore, particularly in Indonesia, Malaysia, and Singapore. Depicted as a beautiful woman with pale skin, red eyes, and long black hair, she often appears in a blood-stained white dress. Her monstrous form resembles a beast or vampire. The Pontianak is linked to a woman who died during childbirth and is said to emerge during the full moon to hunt, using her long fingernails to kill and consume her victims. Signs of her presence include the cries of infants, feminine laughter, and the smell of decaying flesh or plumeria flowers. To protect against her, some believe that driving a nail into the hole on the nape of her neck can transform her into a benign form temporarily. Additionally, to avoid attracting her, people often keep clean laundry inside at night, as its scent is said to lure her. The Ranamari is a sea monster from Maldivian folklore, notorious for its horrific acts of violence against young women. Described as towering over palm trees, with a pitch-black body and arms that extend to its toes, the Ranamari was believed to have raped and murdered countless women. To protect the rest of the women on the island, a ritual was performed where the most beautiful woman was left on the beach as an offering to the monster, hoping it would spare others. The story of Ranamari is also recounted by the Moroccan traveler Ibn Battuta. According to his account, the Maldivian king, under the influence of the demon, enforced a monthly sacrifice of a virgin girl. Each month, a woman chosen by lottery was left alone in a temple by the sea to meet her fate. The next morning, her body would be found and buried by her grieving family. Ibn Battuta's version of the story ends with a dramatic turn. A Muslim traveler, instead of a girl, was sent to the temple to read verses from the Quran. After reciting the Quranic verses, the Ranamari vanished and was never seen again. The islanders, grateful for the demon's departure, converted to Islam, believing that Allah's power had saved them from the monster. The Mongolian deathworm is a legendary creature purported to live in the Gobi Desert. Described as a sausage-shaped, headless worm up to two feet long, it is said to be deadly, with abilities to kill through venom or electric shocks. 
The creature first gained Western attention through Roy Chapman Andrews' 1926 book On the Trail of Ancient Man, which included second-hand accounts from Mongolian officials. Despite investigations, including comparisons to a Tartar sand boa, there is little evidence for its existence. Reports suggest it lives underground and emerges rarely, possibly after rain. In 1983, a specimen of Tartar sand boa was shown to locals who claimed to have seen the Mongolian death worm, and they confirmed that this was the same animal. The Nawarupa, also known as Bayala, is a chimeric creature from Burmese and Rakhine mythology. It combines features from nine animals, an elephant's head, a deer's eyes, a rhinoceros's horns, a parrot's tongue and wings, a lion's body and legs, and a peafowl's tail. The Yeti, also known as the Abominable Snowman, is an ape-like creature said to inhabit the Himalayan mountains. Despite numerous claims such as sightings, photos, and footprints, evidence for its existence is often dubious or suspected to be hoaxes. The legend of the Yeti is thought to stem from a mix of Sherpa folklore and misidentified animals like bears or yaks. It is often compared to Bigfoot due to their similar physical descriptions. The Pulgasari is a mythical creature from Korean folklore, described as a metal-eating beast with a composite body of various animals, including a bear, elephant, rhino, tiger, and bull. It was created by a Buddhist monk during the Goryeo era who used a rice grain figure and fed it metal needles. The creature grew larger and stronger with each piece of metal it consumed. Despite attempts to kill it with arrows, swords, and fire, the Pulgasari continued to thrive, eventually burning down a village. The myth varies on its fate, with some believing it still exists today, while others say it was defeated by monks. In a tale from Jin folklore, a Jin girl fell in love with a human boy, a forbidden act that led to her punishment. The jinn, enforcing their rules, transformed her into a tree. Despite this punishment, the girl wept continuously, and her tears turned into frankincense resin. Over thousands of years, this tree, now known for its white, musk-scented resin, symbolizes her enduring grief for her lost love. Frankincense trees are steeped in myths. Ancient records describe them as being protected by fierce red snakes or located in mysterious, fog-shrouded places. Diodorus of Sicily and Herodotus both noted the presence of dangerous serpents around these trees. Herodotus described them as small, winged serpents that guarded the frankincense trees, a description criticized by some as fanciful but potentially based on real, venomous snakes like the carpet viper, known for its deadly bite and striking ability. The Bamanu is a cryptid creature, reportedly dwelling in the mountainous regions of northern Pakistan. Shepherds in these areas claim to have encountered it. Considered the Pakistani counterpart to Bigfoot, the name Bamanu originates from the Kowa language. The creature's territory spans the Chitral and Karakoram ranges, situated between the Pamirs and the Himalayas, overlapping with the realms of the Almas of Central Asia and the Yeti of the Himalayas. Described as possessing both human and ape-like features, the Bamanu is said to have a penchant for abducting women and attempting to mate with them. It's often depicted wearing animal skins on its back and head. In local folklore of northern Pakistan, it's portrayed either as an ape or a wild man. The first notable search for the Barmanu was conducted by Spanish zoologist Jordi Magrana from 1987 to 1990. He collected numerous first-hand sighting accounts before his untimely death in 2002. His research suggested a resemblance between the Barmanu and the ape-like man concept of a living Neanderthal. During a search in the Shishiku Valley in Chitral in May 1994, Magraner and his team 
reported hearing unusual guttural sounds, possibly indicative of the creature's presence, but further investigation yielded no conclusive evidence. Mount Orobo is featured in Thevet's cosmography. This mountain, home to a small Arab population, is named after a fish called the Orobo, which inhabits the local sea. The Orobo is described as being 9 to 10 feet long, with an armoured appearance, somewhat akin to a brigandine, but its scales are less tough than those of a crocodile. Thevet's description gives it a humpbacked, feline-like look. The fish's flesh is notably unpleasant, with Thevet considering it worse than old camel meat or Livonian mastiff, and consuming it can lead to kidney and bladder stones. Despite this, the locals of Mount Marzuan consume Orobo, treating their resulting stones with a diuretic mixture of Orobo fat, false gold dust, and cyclamen. In his account, Paré misnames the Orobo as Orobon and locates it at Mount Mazuan, adding that it is highly aggressive towards other fish. The Orobo may have been inspired by crocodiles, though Thevet differentiates between the two. Another possibility is a monitor lizard, similar to a creature described by Sir Andrew de Toulonjean and Pierre de Vaudray in Palestine. A three-foot-long, green lizard-like animal with sturgeon-like scales childlike hands, a hair-like head, and a long tail. This creature made cat-like noises and was feared by local Arabs, leading to its immediate demise. The Aswang is a term used in Filipino folklore to describe a variety of malevolent shape-shifting creatures, including vampires, ghouls, witches, and viscera suckers, as well as human-beast hybrids such as dogs, cats, or pigs. Known for their fearsome reputation, Aswangs are featured prominently in Filipino myths, stories, arts, and films. Spanish colonists noted that the Aswang was particularly feared in the 16th century. Despite their lack of a specific motive other than causing harm, their actions are often seen as a reversal of traditional Filipino values. Amganan is a legendary female jinn from Gulf folklore, also known as Um al Duwais in other Gulf nations. She is described as a malevolent spirit that inhabits abandoned places. Amganan is known for taking on the appearance of a woman to lure and kill young men through seduction and other deceptive means. In Arabian mythology, the Anka is a mythical golden bird of great mystery. It is said to appear only once in ages and is often associated with the setting sun, implying it can be found at the place where the sun sets. The Anka is described as an extraordinarily beautiful and colourful bird with a long neck, a human-like face, and four pairs of wings. It is said to have a white neck and to bear resemblance to all living beings. Zakaria al Kazwini, in his work The Wonders of Creation, describes the Anka as a wise and ancient bird living on Mount Kaf, with a lifespan of 1,700 years. The Anka mates at 500 years of age, and its chick emerges from the egg only after 125 years. Despite its majestic appearance, the Anka is also noted for being a source of calamity and misfortune. According to legend, it was originally created as a perfect being but became a plague and was ultimately destroyed. The bird is said to eat only elephants and large fish. In Malay ghost lore, the Orang Minyak, meaning oily man, is a supernatural entity coated in black grease that abducts young women at night. The legend first surfaced in a Singaporean newspaper report on October 12, 1957. Traditionally, the creature was described as having a coating of hair oil, but over time, the stories evolved to include coconut oil, soot, and eventually, crude oil, reflecting industrial changes in the region. The Orang Minyak is said to be highly elusive due to its slippery coating, which allows it to climb walls and evade capture. Legends describe it either as naked or wearing black swimming trunks, 
with some versions portraying it as a rapist who targets virgins. These tales emerged in the 1950s and were used to explain various rapes, with young Malay women reportedly wearing sweaty clothing to appear less attractive to the creature. Singaporean writer Yogesh Tulsi has noted that the depiction of the Orang Minyak coated in crude oil symbolizes the clash between traditional ways of life and modern industrial advancements. Dokaebi are mythical creatures from Korean folklore, often described as Korean goblins. They are nature spirits or deities with extraordinary powers, capable of both aiding and tricking humans. While some legends portray Dokaebi as mischievous beings who play pranks or challenge travelers to wrestling matches, others depict them as helpful spirits who bring good fortune. Dokaibi are known for their varied and often fearsome appearances. They are commonly depicted on ancient roof tiles with distinctive patterns. They are sometimes shown with one leg, and tales suggest that exploiting this trait can help in overcoming them in contests. Their presence is often signaled by a glimmering light or tall blue flames. These beings are associated with magical items, such as the Dokaibi Gamtu, a hat that grants invisibility, and the Dokaibi Bangmangi, a magic club that can summon objects. They are said to favor certain foods, including buckwheat jelly and red bean rice cakes. In rituals like Dokaibi Gosa, offerings of these foods are made to appease them. Dokaibi are believed to have immense supernatural powers that can bring good harvests, bountiful catches, and prosperity. They are also thought to guard against evil spirits. In some regions, practices are performed to invite Dokaibi for good luck, while others are aimed at driving them away to prevent misfortune and disease. For instance, in Jeju Island, the Durin Gut ceremony is conducted to ward off Dokaibi and alleviate mental illness. Riri Yakseya is a fearsome demon in Sinhalese folklore, known for his cruelty and power, rivaled only by Mahasona. He is depicted with a human body and a monkey's head, fiery red skin, and rides a red bull. Riri Yakseya is believed to inflict various illnesses on people, with a particular focus on hemorrhages and blood diseases. According to legend, Riri Yakseya appears as a pygmy-like apparition at the deathbed of a person. In this form, known as Maru Avatar, he is said to be about one span and six inches tall, holding a rooster in one hand, a club in the other, and carrying the corpse of a man in his mouth. The antelope known to the Greeks as Analopos and to the Romans as Callipus, pretty foot, was believed to inhabit regions like India, Syria, and the Euphrates Basin. These creatures were noted for their preference for the cool waters of the Euphrates. Resembling a roe deer in appearance and size, the Callipus was distinct due to its large, saw-toothed horns, which were capable of shredding branches and human limbs. However, these horns also became easily entangled in thickets, making the Callipus vulnerable to hunters. When trapped, the Callipus would cry out, revealing its location to hunters. Alexander the Great encountered these antelopes in India, where they were noted for piercing Macedonian shields with their horns. Despite their formidable appearance, they were no match for Alexander's soldiers, who reportedly killed between 5,400 and 8,550 of them. This large-scale slaughter may explain their rarity in later times. Possible identifications for the Callipus include various antelope species and the moose, whose tree-shredding behavior might have inspired the Callipus's serrated horns. In Tajikistan, the Xal is a type of demon associated with childbirth. Traditionally described as a grotesque, hairy crone, the Xal is characterized by its unattractive appearance, with sagging breasts and a woolen bag slung over one shoulder. This bag contains the heart and liver of its victims. 
The creature is believed to interfere with human reproduction, specifically targeting childbirth. This malevolent spirit is known for causing difficulties and harm during childbirth, making it a feared entity in local folklore. In the epic poem Fra Afaimani, Fiswea Samut is depicted as a sea ogress residing in an underwater cave. Fra Afaimani, a prince from the Ratana kingdom, was sent abroad by his father to study, with plans for him to inherit the throne. Afai is skilled with a magical flute named Pai, which has the power to put people to sleep or even kill them. Fiswea Samut, enchanted by the flute's melodious tunes, emerges from the sea to find its source. Upon meeting Afai, she falls in love with him and schemes to marry him. Despite her efforts to disguise herself as a beautiful woman, Afai, aware of her true nature, is unable to escape her grasp. The two live together and have a son, Sin Samudra, who is kept isolated for eight years. Eventually, Afai reveals the truth about his mother to Sin, and they plan their escape. Afai tricks Fiswea Samut into meditating on a distant island and fasting for three days. When Fiswea realizes she has been deceived, her beauty fades and she reverts to her ogre form. In her anger, she searches for Afai along the beach. The story concludes with Afai reaching a shore where he plays his magic flute one last time. The music shatters Fiswea Samut's heart, leading to her demise. Many years before East Timor existed, a small crocodile lived in a distant swamp. He dreamed of growing big, but with scarce food, he grew weak and despondent. Determined to fulfill his dream, he ventured into the open sea. But as the sun grew hotter, he found himself far from shore, rapidly drying out and near death. A compassionate boy found the struggling crocodile and carried him to the sea. Instantly revived, the crocodile thanked the boy and promised, If I can ever help you, call me, and I will be at your command. Years later, the boy, now a young man, called upon the crocodile, who had grown strong. Brother Crocodile, he said, I wish to see the world. Climb on my back, said the crocodile. Which way should I go? Follow the sun, replied the boy. The crocodile journeyed east with the boy on his back, and they traveled the oceans for years. Eventually, the crocodile said, Brother, our journey has been long, and now my time has come. In gratitude, I will become a beautiful island for you and your descendants to live upon. As the crocodile died, he grew larger and transformed, his back becoming the mountains and his scales the hills of Timor. To this day, the people of East Timor, when swimming, say, Don't eat me, crocodile. I am your relative, honoring the crocodile's sacrifice and eternal presence in their land. Mahachkai is a vampire-like creature from Turkic and Tatar folklore. A Mahachke is believed to be a person born with two hearts and two souls. Such individuals, when they die young, leave one soul behind, which animates the deceased corpse and turns it into a Mahachkai. This undead creature, resembling an owl at night, preys on humans and animals, feeding on their blood and internal organs. To prevent a Mahachke from rising again, folklore suggests decapitating the corpse and burying the head separately or burying the body face down with a sickle placed around its neck. Signs of a machkai include wandering in the forest with fresh soil and blood on one's hands and possibly having torn fingernails. Bichura is a house spirit in Turkic folklore known for its complex and sometimes contradictory nature. The Bichura can appear as a cat or dog, or sometimes take on a more monstrous form or none at all. It is often depicted in red dresses. The Bichura's actions resemble those of poltergeists, and it can be either helpful or troublesome. 
It pulls hair to warn women of danger from abusive men, moans and howls to signal impending trouble, and weeping indicates a death in the family. It may harass horses, steal grain to feed its own horses, or play tricks if displeased. Common tricks include moving objects, breaking dishes, making walls creak, banging pots, and leaving muddy footprints. The Batura typically resides behind the stove or in the cellar. It can be difficult to remove if it is brought into a house with harmful intent. However, when the house is well kept, it helps with chores like looking after chickens and spinning at night. Families generally strive to live in harmony with the Bichura, addressing any issues to prevent mischief. Yathum is a sleep paralysis demon in some Middle Eastern folklore, specifically identified as a type of jinn. Yathum is described as short and naked, with distinct features including horns and a tail. This unsettling appearance aligns with many traditional depictions of jinn, which often possess grotesque or fearsome traits. Yathum is primarily known for causing sleep paralysis, a condition where individuals wake up unable to move or speak, often accompanied by a feeling of intense fear or the sensation of a presence in the room. It is said to appear at night, specifically when people are trying to sleep. The presence of Yathum during these episodes often exacerbates feelings of dread and helplessness. The Huma bird is a mythical creature that never lands, soaring high above the earth throughout its life. In some legends, it's said to have no legs. Some stories compare it to a phoenix burning itself every few centuries and then rising from the ashes. The Huma is also unique for having both male and female traits in one body, each with one wing and one leg. Known for its compassion, the Huma is often called a bird of fortune because its shadow or touch is considered lucky. In Vietnamese mythology, the nine-tailed fox known as Ho Li Tin is a complex figure. These foxes can be either helpful or harmful depending on the story. According to popular law, a fox can gain magical powers through cultivation. After a century, it might develop three tails and be called Yu Ho, or Tam Vi Yu Ho, three-tailed demon fox. After a thousand years, it could evolve into a six-tailed fox. When it reaches nine tails, it becomes a nine-tailed fox or a nine-tailed celestial fox, with each tail representing a life. To kill one, you need to cut off its tail. The Nesnas is a monster from the Hadramaut region in Yemen. It appears as a half-dead man that is divided down the middle with a lamb's tail showing only one half at a time. This half might be skeletal or still have flesh, though it's unclear how the Nesnas chooses which half to display. The Nesnas, trapped between life and death, is restless and often targets those it thinks don't appreciate their full lives. Victims of the Nesnas disappear without a trace, and some believe it seeks to return to full life by taking others' lives. Hawahua is a terrifying monster known for eating children alive. It has a scorpion's tail, a donkey's leg, a panther's leg, a lobster claw for a right hand, a monkey's hand for a left hand, a turtle's chest, mountain goat horns, an ape's face, and eyes that spit fire. Its hair is actually live poisonous snakes ready to strike. It wears a coat patched together from the clothes of the children it has devoured. While not attractive to lure children to their unsuspecting demise, it is fast enough to snatch up children who wander alone at night without care. The Kishi is a two-faced demon from Angola. It has a handsome human face on the front and a hyena's face on the back. The Kishi uses its human face and charm to attract young women, who it then devours with its hyena face. The hyena face has long, sharp teeth and incredibly strong jaws that can't be pried open once it bites. The Aziza are a kind, supernatural race in West African mythology. 
They live in forests, offering good magic to hunters and sharing practical and spiritual knowledge, like the use of fire. These small beings are said to dwell in anthills and silk cotton trees. The plant, genus Aziza, is named after them. While usually described as a group, some traditions speak of a single entity named Aziza, often depicted as a small, one-legged man smoking a pipe. The idea of winged Aziza appears only after European contact, raising questions about mutual influence with European fairy lore. The Ticoloche is a mischievous and malevolent water spirit. This dwarf-like creature can turn invisible by drinking water or swallowing a stone. People with bad intentions summon Tokoloshis to cause trouble for others, ranging from scaring children to causing illness or death. Traditional protection methods include raising beds off the ground and seeking help from pastors or traditional healers. The legend originated from Bantu folklore to explain mysterious nighttime deaths in rondevelles. People sleeping on the floor often died from carbon monoxide poisoning from their indoor fires, while those elevated avoided this fate. This led to the belief that the Ticoloche, a short creature, stole lives at night unless beds were raised. Some Zulu people and other Southern African tribes still hold superstitions about the Ticoloche, which is said to be created by witch doctors to harm enemies, sometimes biting off toes. To keep a Ticoloche away, placing bricks under each bed leg is advised. A client, usually driven by jealousy, approaches an evil witch doctor for revenge. They must promise the soul of a loved one, chosen by the Ticoloche. The witch doctor then uses a dead body, pierces its eye sockets and brain, and sprinkles it with powder to shrink it. The Ticoloche is released to terrorize the target, claiming the soul of the client's loved one later on. The Dagara people, native to Burkina Faso and northern Ghana, have a rich cultural heritage with deep-rooted traditions, beliefs, and rituals. Their mythology features various creatures and heroes, including the Contemblé. These small beings serve as intermediaries between the human and spiritual realms. Known for their immense wisdom, the Contemblé offer guidance and protection to those who communicate with them. I couldn't really find much on Burundi, but here's what I did found. Gustav is a notorious man-eating Nile crocodile in Burundi, Africa, known to roam the Ruzidzi River and the northern shores of Lake Tanganyika. Rumored to have killed 200 to 300 people, he has achieved a mythical status and is deeply feared in the region. Gustav's size is impressive, but not precisely known. In 2002, National Geographic estimated him to be over 20 feet long and weighing more than 2,000 pounds. He is believed to be over 60 years old and still growing. Distinctive features include three bullet wound scars and a deeply wounded right shoulder blade. These scars' origins are unknown. Scientists suggest his large size and weight make it difficult for him to catch agile prey like fish, antelope, and zebra leading him to hunt larger animals such as hippopotamus, buffalo, and humans. Despite his reputation as a man-eater, locals warn that Gustav often leaves his victims' bodies uneaten. If you know some mythical creatures or cryptids from Burundi, feel free to leave a comment down below under the like button. The Kwakun Klun is a mysterious creature said to inhabit the waters around Cape Verde, Africa. Needing oxygen, it jumps out of the water to breathe and capture prey. This creature ranges from 13 to 20 feet long, can be up to 5 feet wide and 3 feet tall when lying down. Also known as the Agenti, it has a long blue tongue similar to a snake's. The Kwakun Klun has thick claws that are four to six inches long. It is known for its incredible speed, capable of torpedoing through the water at 100 miles per hour, reportedly strong enough to break small caravels in half. 
sightings are rare and usually only involve glimpses of it jumping out of the water or sliding back into the Atlantic Ocean. A Jengu is a water spirit in the traditional beliefs of the Sawabantu groups of Cameroon. The Bakweri call them Liengu, and the Bakoko refer to them as Bisima. Miengu resemble mermaids living in rivers and the sea, and they bring good fortune to their worshippers. They can also cure diseases and act as intermediaries between humans and the spirit world. Jengu worship is significant among the Duala and related groups and is part of young girls' rites of passage among the Bakweri. Miengu are typically described as beautiful beings with long hair and gap teeth. The Jengu cult may have originated with the Ijo people and spread eastward to the Batanga. Initially, Jengu worship was linked to obtaining crayfish, marking the end of the rainy season, winning pirogue races, and protection from diseases. Membership was once restricted to free Duala, excluding even some prestigious clans. By the early 19th century, European traders and explorers documented the established practice of Jengu worship. Despite early missionaries' attempts to suppress it, the cult remains active in Cameroon's littoral and southwest provinces. Both men and women can now join, although this inclusivity might be recent. Among the Duala and Malimba, the practice is primarily male, while among the Bakweri, it is mainly for women. Mbwiri is a Central African demon believed to possess individuals, often leading to symptoms diagnosed as epilepsy by doctors. When possession is suspected, a shaman is called to help. A hut is built where the afflicted person, the shaman, and his assistants stay until the patient is cured. For ten days to two weeks, they eat, drink, and dance to flute and drum music funded by the patient's family. This lifestyle drives away Mbwiri, who dislikes good living. Only the patient knows they are possessed and dances until epileptic fits occur. After being cured, the patient builds a small fetish house, avoids certain foods, and performs specific duties. Occasionally, the process leads to madness, causing some patients to flee into the bush. Since ancient times, among the Pala clan in western Chad, pregnant women faced a perilous fate. Their only means of giving birth was through a fatal procedure involving a knife. However, one courageous woman facing this dire prospect fled to the forest and poured out her distress to the trees. In response, the forest god manifested as a monkey descending from a tree. This divine monkey gathered leaves, chewed them, mixed them with red palm oil, and gave the concoction to the pregnant woman to ingest. Miraculously, she then gave birth naturally. Grateful and determined to protect her saviour, the woman brought the monkey back to her village despite opposition. When the men of the village threatened to kill the monkey, she intervened. The monkey, in turn, imparted the knowledge of the herbal mixture to the village men. Since that transformative day, the monkey has been revered as a sacred animal among the Beybalem clan. Shatani are spirits deeply rooted in East African mythology and popular belief. Often malevolent, they manifest in diverse forms with various powers, making them a frequent subject of carved artwork, notably by the Makonde people. Physically, Shatani appear as distorted figures blending human and animal features. They vary greatly, from abstract forms to anthropomorphic beings with exaggerated attributes like one-eyed or one-armed appearances. Carvings typically depict asymmetrical figures, such as those with twisted bodies or unusual appendages, crafted from ebony or African blackwood. The diversity of Shatani includes different classes with distinct characteristics. For instance, the Ukunduka are dangerous spirits known to feed through sexual intercourse, while the chameleon Shatani mimics carnivorous lizard habits. On the other hand, the harmless medicinal shuluel gathers herbs for sorcerers. 
Among the most notorious is Popo Bawa, translated as Bat Wing, characterized by its association with filth and violent acts, often emitting a smell of burnt sulfur. This spirit has a chilling reputation for attacking people, particularly men, in their beds. Eloko, or Biloko in plural, are dwarf-like forest spirits in central Zaire's rainforests. They guard treasures like game and rare fruits fiercely and are believed to be vengeful ancestors. Clad in leaves with grass for hair, they have sharp claws and use bells to cast spells. Only the bravest hunters dare encounter them as they are known to bewitch and consume humans. Tales warn of their cunning, with one recounting a wife's fatal encounter after ignoring her husband's warning about an Eloko's bell. In Bantu mythologies, Mokale Mbembe is a legendary water-dwelling creature said to inhabit the Congo River Basin. Descriptions vary widely, depicting it as either a living animal or a spiritual entity. It is often described as a large herbivore with smooth skin, a long neck, and a single tooth or horn, reminiscent of sauropod dinosaurs. From the early to mid-20th century, Mokalembembe became a focal point for cryptozoologists and proponents of young earth creationism. These groups funded expeditions in attempts to find evidence challenging evolutionary science. However, mainstream experts suggest that accounts of Mokalembembe likely stem from sightings of the black rhinoceros, once common in the region. The Afar people, a Cushitic ethnic group spanning Eritrea, Ethiopia, and Djibouti in the Horn of Africa, have developed a complex belief system, mythology, and rituals despite their challenging arid surroundings. One unique facet of Afar spirituality is the concept of gore, a potent spirit believed to inhabit select individuals, granting them extraordinary powers. These individuals, known as Gowala, are revered for their abilities to heal, offer protection, and foresee future events. They hold a vital role in Afar society, providing spiritual guidance and ensuring community well-being through their mystical insights and interventions. Egyptian sphinxes are typically shown as andros sphinxes, with a human head, often that of a pharaoh, on a lion's body, without wings. They symbolize strength and protection, often guarding temple entrances. Both Greek and Egyptian sphinxes serve as guardians, commonly seen flanking temple entrances. Overall, sphinxes are closely associated with monumental structures like tombs and temples, embodying both mystery and protective symbolism in various mythologies and cultural contexts. Ebigain is a versatile monster that can manifest in various forms, blending human and animal traits. Often featured in epic tales sung by Mvet players, one such legend recounts the heroic deeds of Mefumu Mbafumu. Confronted with a bridge composed of twisted pythons, Mefumu Mba summoned a mouse from his satchel and applied spit to its head. The mouse transformed dramatically. Its ears expanded like petals of a massive flower. Horns sprouted from its head, legs elongated, claws sharpened, and a bat-like wingspan emerged. Now resembling a hybrid of bat, buffalo, and vampire, it became an ebigane. Mefumuimba marked the ebigane's head with a red crayon, then directed it towards the python bridge, promising ample prey to sustain it for years. The creature flapped its ears loudly, whinnied, and took flight, circling like a bird of prey before swooping down on the pythons. It seized one in its powerful jaws and claws, overcoming its resistance, and carried it off to Mount Begley to feast at its leisure. Couldn't really find much info, but I did find that in the cultures of the Horn of Africa and neighboring regions of the Middle East, Zar refers to a demon or spirit believed to possess individuals, primarily women, causing discomfort or illness. The Zar ritual or Zar cult aims to reconcile the possessing spirit with the afflicted individual, 
Unlike exorcism, which expels spirits, czar rituals are aimed at pacifying and accommodating the spirit, often seen as a lifelong condition. If you have more info about mythical creatures from Eritrea, let me know in the comments down below. In a village ruled by a chief with two wives, each having a daughter, Mapindane and Kitila, the chief favors Mapindane while despising Kitila. To humiliate Kitila, the chief orders his hunters to find a Nyanya Bulembu, a monstrous creature with a moss-green hide. After encountering several disappointing creatures, they finally capture a terrifying beast from a green pool. Kitila is forced to wear the creature's skin, making her appear monstrous and repulsive. She lives as a despised servant until she meets a compassionate fairyman who gives her a magical carved stick. Whenever Katila bathes in the river with this stick, she sheds her monstrous skin and becomes beautiful again temporarily. One day, a visiting prince sees her in her true beauty while bathing. Despite her returning to her monstrous form outside of the water, he chooses Kitila as his bride. On their wedding day, as she bathes in the river, her bulembu skin is permanently stripped away, revealing her true beauty. From then on, Kitila and the prince live happily together. In Ethiopia, there's a long-standing belief that blacksmiths, whose craft is passed down hereditarily, possess magical abilities to transform into hyenas. Known as Buddha, these were hyenas allegedly roam at night to plunder graves. They are widely distrusted among locals. Similar beliefs exist in Sudan, Tanzania, and Morocco, where the Berber people describe the Buddha as individuals who metamorphose into hyenas at night, reverting to human form by daybreak. The Ikong is a formidable mythological being among the Fang people, a prominent ethnic group in Equatorial Guinea, Gabon, and Cameroon, with a population of approximately one million. Described as a large, serpent-like creature with shape-shifting abilities, the Ikong serves as a guardian spirit, protecting the Fang people from harm. It embodies strength and resilience, reflecting the creator gods in Zame's benevolence by aiding those who uphold the moral principles established by the Creator God. The Ninki Nanka is a legendary creature from West African folklore, described variably as reptilian and possibly dragon-like. According to tradition, it resides in the swamps of West Africa and is believed to be extremely large and dangerous. Tales warn children against venturing into the swamps as they may fall victim to the Ninki Nanka. Accounts of the creature depicted as a marsh-dwelling beast, approximately 9 meters or 30 feet long. It is said to have a body resembling a crocodile, a long neck akin to a giraffe's, and a horse-like head adorned with three horns. In 2006, a group of dragon hunters from the Center for Fortean Zoology conducted an expedition to Gambia to investigate the Ninki Nanka. They interviewed locals who claimed to have encountered the creature, with one witness describing it as resembling a Chinese dragon in appearance. The Adz is a vampiric being that initially appears as a firefly in the wild, but can transform into human shape when captured. In human form, the Adz has the power to possess individuals, who are then seen as witches. The Adz's influence typically brings harm to those around the possessed person, especially affecting their family or those whom the victim envies. Suspicions of possession arise in various scenarios, such as when a woman has brothers whose children thrive better than her own, or when there's an unusual disparity in survival rates between young and old in a community. The Adz, in its firefly form, is said to enter homes through keyholes cracks, or under closed doors at night. It feeds on people's blood as they sleep, causing illness and sometimes death. In cultural context, tales of the ads likely serve to explain the deadly effects of mosquitoes and malaria. According to Yua folklore, there is no known defense against the ads, 
heightening fear and vigilance among communities. The Nimba is a mythical figure among the Baga people of Guinea, symbolizing fertility and life-giving forces. Depicted as a woman with exaggerated features, she watches over women, ensuring their well-being and fertility. The Nimba is central in rituals, blessing women and promoting harmony with nature's cycles, reflecting the Baga's deep spiritual connection to the natural world. The Ekene is a water spirit revered by the Yola people of Senegal, Gambia, and Guinea-Bissau. Inhabiting rivers and bodies of water, it is known as a shapeshifter capable of assuming human, animal, or supernatural forms. The Ekene is deeply respected for its ability to bring both blessings and misfortune to the community, reflecting its dual nature in Jola folklore. Sasabonsum is a fearsome forest creature in Akan folklore, native to Ghana and the Ivory Coast in West Africa. This malevolent being is known for preying on humans, possessing a hybrid form with both human and animal characteristics. It is often depicted with large wings, sharp claws, and a craving for human flesh. Sasabonsam embodies evil in Akan beliefs, serving as a cautionary tale to discourage people from venturing into the forest alone. The Nandi bear is a creature reputed to inhabit the region where the Nandi people reside in western Kenya. Descriptions depict it as a robust carnivore with high front shoulders, standing over four feet tall with a sloping back. It is said to be nocturnal, ferocious, and capable of standing on its hind legs with reported abilities to kill animals. Local legend attributes reddish hair to the Nandi bear along with long feet, and it is rumored to scalp people. Sightings of this elusive creature have been reported since the 19th century, although it has never been caught or conclusively identified. Speculation has varied over time, with some suggesting it may have been an extinct anthropoid ape due to environmental changes. Kanyapa is a legendary creature described as a shapeless and voracious monster. It is said to swallow everything in its path, growing larger with each consumption. Kanyapa is depicted with multiple sharp tongues used as weapons, symbolizing all that holds back humanity. In the story of Ditarlane, Kanyapa wreaks havoc by devouring all living beings, leaving only one woman alive who had hidden under ashes to mask her scent. Eventually, Kanyapa wedges itself in a mountain pass after consuming all men. The surviving woman prays to the gods not to let humanity perish. In response, she miraculously conceives and gives birth to a son named Diteolain, meaning the diviner, who grows rapidly and learns of the devastation caused by Kanyapa. Diteolain, armed with a knife, confronts Kanyapa alone. Despite being swallowed by the monster, he survives and kills Kanyapa by tearing its entrails with his knife. As Kanyapa dies, thousands of people trapped within its stomach are released. The grateful people initially revere Ditaolain, but later grow suspicious and plot to kill him. To escape their threat, Ditaolain transforms himself into a stone. The tale of Ditaolain and Kanyapa reflects themes of bravery, the triumph of good over evil, and the resilience of humanity in the face of destruction. The Gibahali is a cryptid reported from Liberia's Lofa County, particularly in the Kahai River and surrounding rainforest rivers. Described as a large amphibious reptile resembling a combination of crocodiles and monitor lizards, the Gibahali is said to measure up to 25-30 feet long. It possesses a short snout with large teeth, a powerful tail, and its back is allegedly covered in three rows of serrated armor. 
Local reports suggest that the Gibahali is dangerous and aggressive, known for ambushing prey from the river and dragging it underwater to drown before consuming it on the riverbank. Despite its fearsome reputation, the Gibahali is not regarded as supernatural by locals. Rather, it is considered a real but rare and potentially deadly creature of the rivers. The Tratra Tratra is a mysterious primate reported from southern Madagascar. Described with a human-like face, it has intrigued both cryptozoologists and mainstream zoologists who speculate it could be a surviving giant lemur species like Paleopropithecus. Recent sightings of giant lemurs in northern and eastern Madagascar have been associated with the Tratra Tratra, adding to its elusive status and ongoing interest in its existence. The new Vera is a legendary snake believed to inhabit the Chitipa district of Malawi and sometimes found in South African mines. According to folklore, it is an enormous serpent with eight heads, making it the largest snake in the world. It is associated with precious minerals and is said to generate electricity and emit light at night. The new Vera lives underground and is highly toxic, causing death and disaster when it moves, which reportedly happens every 200 years. It is believed that airplanes flying over a new Vera crash due to its presence. Legend holds that carrying the skin of a new Vera in one's pocket prevents planes from moving and brings wealth. To kill a new Vera, a spiral hut lined with razors must be constructed. Bells are then used to entice the snake into the hut, where it crawls over the razors and cuts itself to death. The Nomo are ancestral spirits in Dogon religion and cosmogony, revered by the Dogon people of Mali. They are considered demi-deities and are associated with water. The word Nomos derives from a Dogon term meaning to make one drink. Nomos are depicted in Dogon folklore as amphibious, hermaphroditic beings with fish-like characteristics. They have humanoid upper torsos, legs and feet, combined with a fish-like lower torso and tail. In Dogon art and mythology, Nomos are known as masters of the water, the monitors and the teachers. They play a crucial role in Dogon spiritual beliefs, often seen as intermediaries between humanity and the divine realm. The Adjule is a cryptid canid reported from the Sahara Desert, particularly in Mauritania. Described as resembling a wolf, sightings have been sporadic, with notable reports including one in 1992 when hunters observed a group of these wolf-like animals hunting along the west coast of northern Mauritania. Karl Marshall's visit to Morocco's Atlas Mountains in 2009 also yielded reports from local Berbers who mentioned occasional sightings of small packs of adulés in the region. This is all I could find. Maybe you can share more in the comments if you have the knowledge. Couldn't find mythical creatures, but I found an urban legend. In 1994, in the village of Lalmati near Flak, Mauritius locals reported encounters with a supernatural being capable of shape-shifting into various animals such as a wolf, dog, cat, monkey, or bat. In its human form, it was described as having a naked body coated with oil, which supposedly made it impossible to capture. Dubbed Tuni Minuit, due to its nakedness and nocturnal habits, the creature allegedly used the cover of darkness to enter homes where it would abuse girls and attack residents, causing widespread fear and panic across the island fueled by media reports and gossip. Echa Kandicha is a mythical figure in Moroccan folklore. She appears as a beautiful woman with the legs of a hoofed animal like a goat or camel. Legend says she lives near water sources such as the sea or rivers in places like Tangier, Tetuan and Fez. Aicha Kandicha uses her beauty to seduce young men, whom she may drive mad or kill. In some versions, she can appear as a man's wife to deceive him. 
beliefs about her vary across Morocco, with some regions calling her Karaja and others noting her fear of steel knives and needles. In Sufi traditions, she is part of a group of female jinn named Aicha, known for wearing black and causing miscarriages in pregnant women. Despite not having a grave, her spirit is said to roam, granting blessings to visitors who seek her help. The Agogwe is a crypto-hominid reported from forests in Tanzania, Mozambique, and possibly Kenya. Described as a dwarf humanoid covered in russet-colored hair, witnesses initially mistook it for a monkey, but described it as resembling little men or little brown men. The Agogwe is said to walk upright gracefully, stand around four to five feet tall, and have a distinctively large big toe separated from the other toes. Local folklore suggests they might perform tasks like hoeing and weeding if offered food and beer. Despite being rare and elusive, reports of Agogwe sightings continue among local villagers and explorers. The Namibian flying snake is an intriguing cryptid reported from the Karas region of Namibia, described with fantastical features reminiscent of dragons from African folklore. It's said to be 9 to 25 feet long, with camouflaging abilities, bioluminescent crest, horns, a neck that can inflate, and leathery bat-like wings, enabling flight with a 30-foot wingspan. Witnesses describe it emitting a loud roar, smelling like tar, and hurling itself into the air from hills. Sightings date back to 1942, including encounters with sheep and a dramatic incident in 1978 involving a French farmer and his cattle. This creature's legend blends elements of myth and potential new species discovery. The Hera is a mythical creature from the folklore of the Songhai people, particularly the Bozo people along the Niger River. It is described as a legendary type of buffalo known for its immense strength and ferocity. In Songhai epic tales, the Hira serves as the main antagonist in the story of Musanam, Moses, the son of a spirit. According to legend, Musa is born to a woman who is impregnated by a spirit residing in a tree where she fell asleep. Raised with magical hunting abilities by his spirit father, Musa, and his courageous fiancée, who is also skilled in magic, confront the Hira when it begins devastating the countryside. To defeat the Hira, Musa learns from a diviner that the monster can only be killed by a female elephant. This elephant is disguised as the chief's girlfriend and transforms into a female Hera. She lures the Hera near a pond where it drinks, and while the Hera is distracted, she plucks four hairs from its tail. She gives these hairs to Musa, who uses them the next day to command the Hera to lie down, enabling him to kill the creature and restore peace to the land. Mamiwata is a revered water spirit, often depicted as a mermaid-like figure. She combines a woman's upper body with the hindquarters of a fish or serpent. Mamiwata is associated with beauty, wealth, and healing, and is known to possess her devotees, often through rituals involving intense dancing and trance. Offerings to Mamiwata include food, drink, and expensive goods like jewelry, reflecting her status as a benefactor of material prosperity. She is also linked to fertility and is believed to cure ailments, although her demands for fidelity are strict and failure to comply may result in misfortune. The Ikemizi is a cryptid reported from Rwanda's Virunga volcano region, described as a hybrid between a lion and a leopard. It is said to have grey fur with dark spots and a distinctive beard on its chin. Sightings of this creature are rare, and it remains a subject of local folklore and occasional reports from the area. Couldn't find any mythical creatures, but I did find some info about a clever tortoise. In one tale, the tortoise won the king's daughter in marriage by winning a bet, proving that chickens are never not hungry, and in another story, the tortoise 
confident in his ability to guess dreams, uses colorful feathers to transform into a bird. He then spies on the Emperor and learns about his dream involving a breadfruit. Tortoise, now armed with this knowledge, returns to the Emperor and confidently declares that he knows the dream. Yumbos are supernatural beings from Wolof mythology, primarily associated with the Labu people of Senegal, West Africa, also known as Bakna Rakna, meaning good people. They are believed to be spirits of the dead, appearing entirely pearly white with silver hair. These diminutive beings stand about two feet tall. According to legend, Yumbos reside beneath the Paps Hills and emerge to dance in the moonlight. They host lavish feasts where they dine on corn, often stolen from humans, and fish, which they catch themselves, served by invisible attendants whose hands and feet are the only visible parts. Yumbos are known to extend invitations to both locals and foreigners to partake in their festivities. In Seychelloa folklore, Songula is a monkey or ape-like figure whose tales have been passed down through generations on the islands. In one popular story, Sangula and the King's Pool, Sangula is depicted as very dirty with a long brown tail. Sangula manages to evade numerous guards trying to prevent him from swimming in the King's Pool. Eventually captured by a clever tortoise, Sangula convinces the king that only ropes made from the fibers of a banana tree can securely bind him. However, once bound, Sangula effortlessly breaks free and escapes, leaving behind laughter and mischief in his wake. I only found that the Asipramanta, water leopard, is a water lion reported from Sierra Leone, described as a man-eating animal which lives in a deep pool. If you have more info on mythical creatures or cryptids from Sierra Leone, leave them in the comments. Corius Maris had the ability to turn into a hyena man at nightfall by using a special stick. He could reverse this transformation and return to human form by morning, simply by repeating the process. The Grootslang, also known as Big Snake in Afrikaans, is a cryptid reportedly sighted near South Africa's Orange River. It's often associated with sightings of large snakes, possibly rock pythons, python sabai, and other serpentine creatures in the region. Bernard Hoverman suggested that the Grootslang might correspond to his concept of the long-necked sea serpent Megaloteria longicollis. The Grootslang is described as being 40-50 feet in length and to leave a track three feet wide. Some legends describe it as having diamonds in its eye sockets. The Elayu, a cryptid from the marshes of the White Nile, now South Sudan, is described as a massive, serpent-like creature with facial features like barbels or a crest. It's often associated with tales of neo-dinosaurs in Africa, but is speculated to be either an enormous catfish or, historically, a giant snake. According to accounts, the Eliao can grow up to 40 feet or even longer with a thick body. Some reports suggest it could reach staggering lengths of 4,100 feet, with a body size comparable to a donkey's or horse's. Unlike typical pythons, the Elao is said to have light brown or dark yellow skin and various facial protrusions. Descriptions vary, with some mentioning a short crest of hair resembling a crowned crane, while others describe it with long, wiry hairs used to grab its prey. It's believed to inhabit holes in riverbanks and marshes, leaving distinctive furrows when it moves over land, particularly during the rainy season when it emits sounds akin to an elephant's rumble. The Abukan, also known as Father of the Horn in Arabic, was a cryptid ungulate often likened to an African unicorn reported from Chad and Sudan. Described as a one-horned pachyderm, the Abukan had a bull-like or buffalo-like body that was extremely stocky and compact. Standing about five feet tall, with a length of six feet and a width of four feet, it boasted massive, rigid, elephant-like legs so inflexible that it purportedly had to sleep on its side 
with its legs straight out. Its feet were round with two nails, and it had a short, hairy tail and small ears with two lateral protrusions above or behind them. Its tough grey hide, thicker than that of a rhinoceros, featured a line of hair from the neck to the middle of its back. The abukan's most distinctive feature was its single horn, growing from its forehead between the eyes rather than from its nose. This horn, approximately 18 inches long, was grey with a scarlet-red upper third. Reports claimed it could flex when the abukan was calm, swaying from side to side, but became rigid when the creature was angry. Primarily a nocturnal herbivore, the abukan fed on melons and octon. Females gave birth to only one offspring at a time. Despite its herbivorous diet like the rhinoceros, the abukan was said to be extremely aggressive, capable of tearing people to shreds with its horn without provocation. Popabawa, an evil spirit or shatani, is believed by Zanzibar residents to have first appeared on Pemba, a Tanzanian island. Popabawa is a shapeshifter, capable of taking both human and animal forms, not just the bat form implied by its name. It usually visits homes at night, but can also appear during the day. Sometimes its presence is accompanied by a sulfurous odor. Popabawa attacks men, women, and children, often targeting entire households before moving on to another nearby. Its attacks range from physical assaults and poltergeist-like activities to feared sexual assault. Victims are often pressured to tell others about their assault and are threatened with repeat visits if they don't. During Popabawa panics, many people stay awake outside their homes at night, huddling around open fires with family and neighbors for protection. Avlaleti is a mythical creature with the head of a human and the body of a sheep. Known for its incredible strength and agility, it symbolizes bravery and perseverance and is part of the Yu people mythology, a major ethnic group in West Africa, mainly living in southeastern Ghana and southern Togo. The Endalawo is a cryptid cat reported in the forests of western Uganda, sometimes considered a dark leopard. Described as a mostly black, pack-hunting big cat, it resembles a leopard in shape, size, characteristics, and claws. Its coat is nearly black on the back and hyena grey on the flanks and underside, with minimal markings except on the extremities and lower jaw. Unlike typical leopards, the Endalawo is said to hunt in groups of three to four, emitting a distinctive laugh during its hunts. Congamatos are large pterosaur-like cryptids found in tropical and subtropical regions of Africa, especially in Zambia, the Congo, and Angola. Their name, meaning breaker of boats or overturner of boats, comes from stories of congamatos capsizing canoes and attacking people near rivers. Described as reddish lizards with membranous wings and teeth in their beaks, their wingspans reportedly range from four to 100 feet. When shown pictures of pterosaurs, locals identified them as congamatos. Congamatos are said to attack humans and overturn boats with historic accounts of European explorers encountering large winged creatures. Though they primarily eat fish, they are also rumored to dig up graves and steal human corpses due to shallow burials in the region. The Niami Niami, also known as the Zambezi River God or Zambezi Snake Spirit, is a revered deity among the Tonga people living along the Zambezi River. Believed to protect and sustain the Tonga during difficult times, the Niami Niami is typically depicted as male. Descriptions of the Niami Niami vary, portraying it as a creature with the body of a snake and the head of a fish, a whirlpool, or a river dragon. Commonly depicted with a snake-like body and a fish's head, it is considered the god of the Zambezi Valley. Niami Niami pendants, carved from materials like wood, stone, bone, ivory, silver, or gold, are worn as good luck charms. 
tribal elders and spirit mediums traditionally mediate with the Nayami Nayami on behalf of the River Valley's residents, especially when the spirit is angered. The Nayami Nayami is said to dwell in the Zambezi River, controlling life in and around it. The Tonga believe that both Nayami Nayami and his wife, residing in the Kariba Gorge, are gods of the underworld. The Bunyip is a mysterious creature from southeastern Australian Aboriginal mythology, often said to live in swamps, billabongs, and other water sources. Descriptions of the Bunyip vary widely. Some early accounts describe it as a large, starfish-like creature, while others depict it as resembling seals or long-necked animals. Common sightings describe it as having a shaggy coat and whiskers, with some versions featuring an elongated neck and a mane. The Bunyip is believed to be nocturnal and reclusive, living in lakes and rivers. Legends say it can swim swiftly and make a loud roar. While some stories portray it as a fearsome predator, others suggest it feeds on crayfish. Aboriginal people often avoided unfamiliar waters to steer clear of Bunyips. In Fijian mythology, Dakuwaka is a revered shark deity, often seen as a powerful sea monster protecting the islands. Fishermen especially honor Dakuwaka for keeping them safe from sea dangers. In one myth, Dakuwaka aimed to conquer Kadavu Island, but was stopped by a goddess in the form of an octopus. After a fierce battle, the octopus defeated him by pulling out his teeth, forcing Dakuwaka to vow never to attack Kadavu again. From then on, he became the guardian of Kadavu. Dakuwaka can shapeshift, but is usually depicted as a strong Fijian man with a shark's upper body. In an account by Anglican priest Charles William Wansburn Aston, a giant fish matching Dakuwaka's description nearly capsized a ship in the 20th century, confirming the deity's presence in the Fijian imagination. Oriaria is a giant chieftain with red hair who fell in love with Ne Tituabin, a stunning red-haired woman. Although they had no children, Ne Tituabin's death led to a magical transformation. From her grave grew three trees, a coconut from her head, a pandanus from her heels, and an almond from her navel. She became a revered tree goddess. In the Marshall Islands, Loa is the supreme creator deity. At first, Loa existed alone in the primeval sea. To combat his loneliness, he created reefs, sandbanks, plants, birds, and gods for each cardinal direction. From Loa's leg, the first man, Vulub, and the first woman, Limdunanji, emerged. When their descendants plotted against Vulub, he fled to earth, where from his leg came two more sons. Edao, the younger, became a powerful magician with many adventures. Another version of the myth describes Vulub and Ledgeman, worms living in a shell as the first humans. They raised the shell's upper part to form the sky and left the lower part as the earth, with Loa as the ultimate creator in the background. Oliphat is a trickster god in Micronesian mythology. He is the grandson of the god Anulap, born from his mother Tariso's head. His birth came about after a lewd dance by the octopus goddess Hit, which allowed Oliphat's conception. Oliphat, who initially avoided human contact, discovered his father's identity after drinking from a coconut with a small hole. He was often jealous and caused trouble, such as giving a shark sharp teeth to bite his nephews. As a result, he was recalled to heaven, but continued his mischief by disturbing the gods. Using clever tricks, Oliphat managed to escape many attempts on his life, including hiding in a house's foundation and pretending to be an evil spirit. Despite numerous attempts to kill him, including drowning, burning, and feeding him to a predatory fish, Oliphat survived with the help of his father, 
Anulap. Olifat is known for causing various problems in Micronesia, like sour wine and termite infestations. However, he is credited with important contributions, such as bringing the secret of fire and the practice of tattooing to humanity. In Nauruan mythology, Ariop Enap, a spider, plays a key role in the creation of the world. In the beginning, only Ariop Enap and the sea existed. While searching for food in the darkness, Ariop Enap encountered a massive clam, which swallowed him. Inside the clam, he found a small snail and later a larger one. Ariop Enap placed the snails under his arms, sleeping for three days each time and transferring his power to them. He then had the smaller snail help pry open the clam, revealing a white worm named Rigi. Rigi was magically empowered by Ariop Enap and worked hard to open the clam, creating a sea from his sweat. Once the clam was open, Ariop Enap used its shells to form the earth and the sky. The smaller snail became the moon, and the larger snail became the sun. Ariop Enap made islands from the clam's flesh and covered them with vegetation from his web. Rigi, exhausted and drowned in his own sweat, was wrapped in silk and placed in the sky as the Milky Way. Ariop Enap then created humans from stones to support the sky. To learn the names of the world's creatures, he fashioned a winged creature from dirt under his nails to provoke the creatures into calling out to each other. In Maori mythology, Taniwa are powerful supernatural beings that inhabit deep pools, dark caves, or the sea, often in places with dangerous currents or deceptive waves. They can be either protective guardians or dangerous predators. At sea, Taniwa are often likened to whales or large sharks, such as the southern right whale or whale shark. In inland waters, they might resemble giant geckos or tuataras with spines along their backs, or even appear as floating logs with unusual behavior. Some can tunnel through the earth, causing landslides or creating harbors. For example, the harbor of Wellington and Lake Waikaramoana were said to have been shaped by Taniwa. Taniwa can be male or female. The Taniwa Araitiuru, who arrived with the early voyaging canoes, is credited with creating various parts of Hokianga Harbor. Other Taniwa have unknown origins, but are tied to specific tribal groups as guardians. When treated with respect, Taniwa often act protectively, warning of dangers or saving people from harm. They were placated with offerings like green twigs or the first harvest of kumara, sweet potato. Legends sometimes tell of Taniwa being outwitted or defeated by humans, particularly when they threatened or harmed people from other tribes. For instance, Hotupuku, a Taniwa from Rotorua, was killed, revealing victims and treasures in its stomach. Similarly, the Taniwa Kaiwe was tamed by Tamura, who used a magical weapon to subdue it. Nyorara Huarau, a Taniwa from the northern South Island, was known for capturing and eating villagers. It was eventually ambushed and killed during a feast, and its tail was thrown into a body of water, landing in Wainui Falls in one version of the story. Once a spider god named Mengida Brutkoel was spinning a web in a fruit tree when he noticed a beautiful girl, Turangel, searching for fallen fruit. To help her, Mengida Brutkoel shook the branches, causing a fruit to fall. Turangel looked up and saw a handsome man where the spider god had been. They instantly fell in love and soon married. When Turangel became pregnant, the villagers were only familiar with delivering babies by slicing open the womb with a bamboo knife. Fearing for his bride, Mengida Brutkul locked themselves inside their house, refusing to let the villagers use their traditional method. As the villagers tried to break in and threw rocks, Mengida Brutkul successfully delivered the baby. 
Hearing the baby's cry and seeing Tarangal safe, the villagers celebrated Mengida Brutkol as a hero. He was honored for teaching them natural childbirth. To Kabinana and Tokarvuvu are mythical brothers from Pacific folklore. Tokarvuvu, the foolish brother, is often blamed for various evils and harmful practices, such as cannibalism. In contrast, Tokabinana is known for his benevolent actions and good intentions, although his efforts are frequently thwarted by his brother. While similar tales have been noted along northern Papua New Guinea's coast, they are less common compared to stories from New Britain. In southern Papua New Guinea, such tales are rare. However, stories featuring wise and foolish brothers are widespread in the Solomons and Vanuatu, with some versions involving groups of 10 or 12 brothers. In Polynesian mythology, Tigalau, known as the Guardian of Fish, appears in various stories across the islands. His tales often revolve around his relationships with his wife, with themes of separation, conflict, and reconciliation. In some versions, he has a dual nature, being both a guardian of sharks and a kind youth while other traditions describe him with one human side and one fish side. In Makira Island mythology, Adaro refers to two types of beings, ghosts and elemental spirits. The term Adaro from the Arosi language can mean corpse, ghost, soul or spirit. Makira beliefs hold that each person has two souls, a malevolent one the Adaro, and a benevolent one, the Aunga. While the Aunga departs after death, the Adaro remains. As ghosts, Adaro are often linked with marine animals like sharks and snakes, which can cause harm or death to people. These ghosts may possess animals to inflict damage or steal a person's Aunga, leading to illness. Rituals can control these Adaro to harm people from afar. As elemental spirits, Adaro are associated with natural forces such as the sea or rainbows and play roles in creation myths. They guard sacred places and influence the afterlife, with different locations on the island serving as the Rotomana, the destination for the Aunga after death. Maui is a central figure in Polynesian mythology known as a great culture hero and trickster. Although not typically worshipped as a deity, Maui is revered as a folk hero whose exploits are celebrated across Polynesia. His adventures are recounted from as far west as New Guinea, with many tales sharing common themes despite regional variations. Maui's notable feats include stealing fire for humanity, using his magical hook to fish up islands, and capturing the sun to extend the length of days. His character varies across cultures. He is depicted variously as a handsome youth or an elderly sage. Despite his mischievous nature, many of Maui's actions aimed to benefit humanity. In Tonga, Maui is credited with raising the islands from the ocean. He had two sons, Maui Atalanga and Maui Kisikisi, who discovered fire and taught cooking methods. Maui Motua, another figure, bears the earth on his shoulders, causing earthquakes when he shifts. In Tonga, Maui is sometimes depicted as three brothers, including the trickster Maui Kisikisi, who used a magical fishhook to pull up coral islands from the sea. In Tuvalu, the creation myth of Tepusimote Ali, the eel and the flounder, is a central tale that explains the origins of the islands and natural features. According to the story, the eel and the flounder, once great friends, decided to test their strength by moving a massive stone. The test ended in conflict, with the flounder being crushed under the stone. After escaping, the flounder chased the eel, who, weakened from a blow, sought refuge in a hole. To protect himself, the eel recited a magic incantation, wide and flat, wide and flat, to feed on you to Ali, wide and flat, wide and flat, you will never, never kill me. 
The flounder's flattened body became the model for Tuvalu's atolls, while the eel's thin, rounded form inspired the coconut palm. After the flounder's death, the eel threw the stone into the air, reciting another spell. Black, white, and blue, I will always be true, to myself and to you, too, to make you and me friends. Through this act, the eel created night and day, the blue sky and the sea. By breaking the stone into eight pieces, the eel formed Tuvalu's main islands. The name Tuvalu translates to eight standing together in Tuvaluan. This myth parallels the Samoan story of Sina and the eel, which similarly explains the origin of the first coconut tree. In Melanesian mythology, the Abaya is a formidable and magical eel residing in the freshwater lakes of Fiji, the Solomon Islands, and Vanuatu. Revered as a guardian of the lake's creatures, the Abaya fiercely protects its domain from any who would harm or disturb it. If someone attempts to catch fish in a lake inhabited by the Abaya, they are said to be met with a powerful wave created by the eel's thrashing tail. Alternatively, if harm is done to any creature in the Abaya's habitat, it may unleash a torrential rainstorm that floods the land and drowns the wrongdoers. A notable tale recounts how a man, unaware of the Abaya, discovered a lake teeming with fish and returned with his village to fish there. A woman even encountered the Abaya but could not capture it. Angered by the intrusion, the Abaya summoned a great rainstorm that caused the lake to overflow, drowning everyone except an old woman who had not eaten the fish and survived by climbing a tree. While these accounts seem to reflect human fears and the mystique surrounding the unknown, some suggest that the legend of the Abaya might have originated from encounters with an undiscovered species of giant eel in these remote lakes. And there you have it. If you enjoy our content, please like this video, share it with your friends, and subscribe to the channel. It means a lot. Thank you, and safe travels, my dear friends.